No, ho iniziato a registrare così, perché sono una domanda. Eh sì, sì. Stefan, just give a few minutes to the people because they enter, uh, insert the data and then can... Okay. Comunque, a me pro memoria arrivano tranquillamente, quindi... Sì, tu, Gaetano. Come? Scusami Gaetano, eh, dicevi che è pro memoria, era un dubbio che era venuto anche a me. Appena ti iscrivi ti arriva subito il pro memoria. Sì, sì. sì. Il pro memoria arriva, eh, diciamo, la sera e il, la mattina presto. Però anche immediatamente dopo aver fatto la registrazione, che ho provato adesso, Carlo... E quello è il pro memoria della registrazione, invece il link è arrivato dopo. Però ti fa fare un ulteriore login, poi dopo quando ti dà il link, giusto? Sì, perché vogliamo... perché altrimenti Zoom non fornisce il dato del... Però non è per la profilazione dell'utente, semplicemente perché vuole Zoom quelle, quelle, quei dati là. Stanno entrando, quindi dobbiamo chiudere. Ok. okay. Italian has a certain melody which I like. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I really like that. I'm serious. <laughs> Thank you. This, this is why we are, we are singing in our dialect in the Rhineland, because we adapted it from the Romans. Uh, in a way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There is a kind of melody that uh, resonates. Good morning to you all. Good oh. morning, George. Good morning, George. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Are we, are we now uh, online? I see 43 participants. Yes, I would say. Good morning, oh. everybody. Then good I would morning. say, indeed, good Hi. morning. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from Model to Practice. We are here together in our second morning. Today is the 3rd February of 2022. And we meet today um, to look a bit more into the details of an AU-EU platform co-development. So once again, um, a good morning. Um, we, this is LEAP for FNSSA, uh, an EU-funded project. LEAP for FNSSA stands for Long-Term European-African Partnership for Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. LEAP for FNSSA. This Good Morning Stakeholder Forum from Model to Practice is organized um, by the LEAP for FNSSA Working Group, Actors, Alliances and Policies and uh, colleagues, and in particular, uh, our colleagues from Siambari in Italy, who are organizing here the logistics um, of our meeting. So um, in that sense, colleagues, um, please, the slides are not moving now anymore. That is interesting. Now they do um, get a tea or get a coffee um, and um, enjoy our good morning meeting today. My name is Stefan Hafner. I'm working for the German Aerospace Center, serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. And together with my dear colleague, Jackie Cardo from Kenya, we will facilitate this meeting. Jackie, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stefan. And a very warm, warm welcome from Nairobi to you as well. Uh, good morning indeed. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for taking that time to share with us your thoughts, your views and your interpretation of what our discussion is about. Stefan, we need to be on the second slide, yes. So we need you to become a part of our AUEU platform for research and innovation on food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. So the idea here is we want you to help us develop a relevant, relevant platform. So your input are absolutely critical. As you've heard from Stefan, we are on day two. Uh, 
uh, of our Good Morning uh, Stakeholder Forum. So we really welcome your participation. Next slide, Stefan. So to become a part of this uh, initiative, we want you to sign up and to be able to do that, uh, you will be able to provide us an expression of interest uh, and your willingness to join the AUEU platform for research and innovation on food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. Our colleagues at uh, CM will put for you the link on our chat uh, uh, below to be able to access um, the platform for which we will collect the data and information on your expression of interest. Again, we thank you so much for your time. And please note that we engage interactively with you via the chat uh, facility. And occasionally, uh, which then brings us to our next slide, will be through our Mentimeter uh, feedback tool. Uh, if you have a smartphone, you can uh, scan the code and be able to access it. Or if you are interested in the uh, web address, you can also use the menti.com address, but you have to enter a specific code. But our colleagues at CM have also made that easy for you to participate. So you'll also get a link directly for the uh, Mentimeter on the chat item when the time comes for you to express your view, uh, uh, cast your vote, or just have your say on the questions that we'll raise in the course of the day. Next slide, Stefan. Yes, and just by way of knowing who is among, amongst us, I think we can see we already have 60 participants on board. Let us know in the chat item what your name, your sector, the institution you're coming from, and the country where you are at. In the sector, we mean you indicate whether you're from the private sector, whether you're a farmer, uh, organization, or in agribusiness, from the NGO sector, the funding uh, agencies, whether you're a policymaker uh, or a decision maker or a scientist. So if you can go right ahead and in the next few minutes, just put your details on the chat so that we know who okay. is, is a connection with, problem. Who is with us today? Um, yes, and, and I think as we say, uh, good morning, uh, can you hear me then? No? Um, <laughs> Stefan, yes, a bit, but sometimes it's a bit Stephane. interrupted, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take the floor, Stefan. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, colleagues, what are we doing today? Um, the issue is the AU EU platform co-development. Who are the speakers and facilitators um, today morning? This is uh, Dr. Irene Anna Frempong from FARA, coordinator of Leap for FNSSA, Mrs. Dora Fiani from Kef Bashaya from Egypt. Uh, Jackie and I introduced uh, us each other already and Henning Knipschild from the BLE in Germany and Prudence Makura from NRF South Africa. We um, will start with a presentation from uh, Mrs. Dora Fiani on the private sector in the AU-EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. We then uh, will have a session about potential funding approaches for the AUEU platform together with Prudence and Henning. And the last session then will be a discussion with you about the next milestone for uh, the platform that we want. Um, let us uh, be reminded just quickly again uh, to the last, to the first uh, uh, good morning. Uh, that we organized uh, two days ago from model to practice. We um, presented the meta governance model that has been developed, the program and innovation management cycle model, and the long-term platforms process, which would be a succession of program cycles here symbolized as this green spiral in time. <clears throat> What are we doing in practice? Uh, what did we establish so far? We established a West Africa EU alliance and a North Africa EU alliance abbreviated with WAIA and NAIA. 
we are developing their theories of change and impact pathways in both regions related to data and knowledge management, but also general TCIPs, theories of change and impact pathways towards a monitoring evaluation and learning concept. A communication concept um, is um, in progress in both regions. We are developing a concept for a polycentric cluster coordination. This is linked to a cluster network approach with different cluster mechanisms we are working at. We are furthermore working on uh, the concept of a coordination hub as part of the governance structure of the future platform. And uh, we identified 15 services which are relevant for the program cycle. Um, and this has to be reflected in a kind of coordination hub that we are suggesting and that we are working on uh, so far. Um, and we are about to build a funders consortium uh, for the future after LEAP for FNSSA. What is the main goal? The main goal is indeed to establish the AU-EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture from the meter governance model and the platform process that we mentioned towards an overall AU-EU theory of change and impact pathway communication concepts and um, these processes in which we are currently working to, to uh, feed this platform and to make this uh, platform operational. So um, I may I ask the colleagues uh, to uh, show the first Mentimeter question. I hand over to you, Jackie. Thank you very much, Stefan. And our first Mentimeter question asks you, how familiar are you with the uh, AU, EU platform, uh, what's the question? Collaborative investment. Um, that's the question. How familiar are you with collaborative investment? So have your say, please use uh, the Mentimeter address that uh, our colleagues have put on the chat box so that we are able to know your level of familiarity with collaborative investment. So we have a few minutes to do that. We currently have only five, six people out of 67. Uh, please put in your responses so that at least we have at the bare threshold 50% of you participating. Good, we have 19 so far out of 68. And thank you also so much for putting in your details on the chat box. I, Notice that we have people from Ireland, Uganda, Egypt, uh, Italy as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. So we are 23 people, 24. What is your level of familiarity? Is it low uh, when it comes to collaborative investment or is it high? Mm -hmm. Come on, we're almost as, at uh, 30. Let's get a few more responses before we go uh, to the next item of our agenda. A few more people, it would be good to know uh, where your level of familiarity when it comes to collaborative investment is. Awesome, so let's get two more, at least 35 would give us a good threshold to sample our uh, participation. Colleagues, come on, we are 69 here in this meeting. Please find in the chat the link to the Mentimeter and just give your feedback. Yeah. Please. And do let us know if you're having difficulties in accessing the Mentimeter link. Awesome. So I think we are 35, Stefan. Uh, essentially we have, um, more or less moderate uh, familiarity with collaborative investment. Thank you very much. And um, then I suggest let's come uh, to our first presenter, 
Mrs. Dorafiani. Um, this is very much linked to Good Morning One, where we presented the three different types of working groups in the Waya and the Naya region. And um, Dora will inform us now about the private sector activities in the Naya region towards the AU EU platform. Dora, the floor um, is yours, please. I will stop sharing my screen so that you can show your slides, please. And now the screen is yours. Sorry, your microphone is still off. Now I can see your first slide. That's good. Yes, good morning, everybody. And we can hear you. Good morning, Dora. Good. So the, is the sound OK? Yes. Great. So uh, I only have 10 minutes, and I'll try to be within the 10 minutes. So as you can see, the title of the presentation is the private sector in the African European uh, platform for research and um, innovation in FNSSE. Uh, what I would Dara, like to start. Your, yes, your, yes. Sli your slides are not in uh, presentation mode. We are seeing oh, your I'm screen. Sorry. Yeah, so part of your slide is missing. Presentation mode. My feed is already presentation. Oh, but then again, maybe it might not be possible because I see you're using a PDF and not PowerPoint. Ah. Yeah. So if if you have a PowerPoint, that would be better. Yes. If, yeah. Okay. Yes, that's better. Ah, sorry. <laughs> On the bottom yeah. right, um, there is uh, the button that you should click to have the full screen. It's near the Zoom. Um, yeah, right, that one. Perfect. Ah. You can start, yeah. Dora. Thanks. Excellent. Good, <laughs> good, good. good. Um, So I'm um, starting again, sorry. Uh, we, the private sector uh, component of the uh, platform has been uh, piloted in specifically the North Africa European uh, area, which as you can see here, the uh, what we have called NAOA, which stands for North Africa European Alliance, uh, corresponds to one of the two pilots the leap for FNSSC project has selected together with the West African one uh, each with its own characteristics uh, the way we have approached the private sector in North Africa Europe is the fact that we very quickly found the importance of the existing exchanges among uh, researchers and private sector and policy makers as well between North Africa and Europe since a very long time. And the existence of uh, ongoing projects uh, functioning well, in particular PRIMA and the U uh, UFM, which stands for Union, uh, Union for the Mediterranean. Uh, we um, based our research on the outcome of a series of uh, groups and uh, workshops one was in live during October 2009 during the Africa Food Day in Cairo in 2019, and uh, followed by a series of virtual, virtual workshops, of course, due to COVID this year. Uh, the first very interesting and important thing is the fact that the, uh, the fact that uh, a topic such as uh, multi-actor, bicontinental, private sector, and research 
together with funders is an extremely attractive and as you can see by the names which have been gathered representing uh, the different uh, panelists in those sessions it really shows the interest uh, and therefore the real potential of this concept which to our knowledge have not been really put in practice till now so uh, what in brief this is what we have found i tried to summarize it uh, to facilitate the reading so the the framework uh, all there is a very high convergence of interests between eu and eu private sector categories that's a very interesting thing as well which is that they all agree uh, in their large majority on what needs to be done the challenge is that it has not been done yet and it needs to be done so the framework should be as as you can see a needed framework for ambitious innovation and catalytic changes for fnssc working in partnership between north Af africa and europe uh, the importance of r and i and the major relevance of private public collaboration for r and i projects in the agri food sector then partnership and that is a very strong point because the private sector entities were clear, adamant about the involvement of the private sector that should be based on the principle of full partnership with researchers in both the selection of r and i project as well as their implementation on equal footing and the word equal footing was repeated by many then um, the, the mapping several researchers sorry several funders uh, have pointed to uh, the concept of mapping and the importance of mapping the private sector as key to enhance their visibility to fund providers which clearly means that as of now they are not really seeing the private sector in its diversity and the who is who and uh, because they record they do say that the private sector is the driving force of innovation change and concrete impacts scale up again many insisting on the need to scale up resources to meet investment gap in rural areas especially addressing the missing middle and finally the insisting on systems transition a meaning by this that food systems transition is urgently needed uh, and of imminent importance in north africa so the whole food systems chains need to be transformed and that transformation should obviously be uh, uh, promoted and implemented through r and i to start with uh, three major topics came out i mean many topics came out but we uh, summarized for this uh, exercise the three key points so the first is uh, the insistence on NIR green deals programs and the link of green deals to climate change and the necessity to embark the North Africa and in fact the whole of Africa in the Green Deals programs being put in place by the EU as well as many, many uh, funders. And that should be based again on private sector partnership with the researchers on equal footing in r and project selection, definition and implementation as a core condition for success and sustainability. A second uh, very important theme came up, and that was that is really the uh, top down, uh, sorry, the bottom up approach, which is the setup of a farmer's cluster model. In brief, the concept here is to say that uh, uh, we do need to design models because they don't exist, which regroup small farmers to aggregate them, reach economy of scale, and be able to deliver to them 
all the changes which need to happen in agriculture, uh, because on an individual basis, this is not possible, neither economically viable. So that came out very clearly, and many uh, um, participants uh, linked the change to this concept of you start with the farmer cluster model, uh, work on implementing it, and from there you create the aggregation of the farmers associations and so on. Finally, the R&I priorities. There have been quite a consensus on key topics such as genetics, the issue of seeds and the availability of quality seeds for the farmers came up very loud and clear, low cost technology and frugal innovations uh, as core to enabling sustainable intensive technology and uh, realistic business models uh, for the farmers, but corresponding, of course, to the region, countries, and farmers' associations. Another core topic, uh, came, which came out very clearly, also from different angles, is digital farming, uh, as obviously a cross-cutting objective. So uh, the first theme, of course, is uh, the accessibility to digital farming and using digital farming for what it does very well, which is, <coughs> sorry, linkages. So it's the uh, to enable the creation of new consortium models, uh, the concept of digital innovation hubs, which enable new customized services for farmers, as well as new common services, such as, I mean, the, the concept here is that digital enable customized service in the, for each individual farmer, as well as the common generic services for them because of the uh, flexibility of the digital, such as agriculturalic services, market linkages, etc. The second component is paving the way for entrepreneurs, agri-tech and food tech startups. Everybody agrees on the necessity to bring youth to the agribusiness sector. And that means making the agribusiness sector attractive to youth. It's not enough to say that the agribusiness sector is the main provider and will continue to be the main provider of jobs. It also is that you need to attract youth to how to make them see agribusiness sector within their own world of today. And that is the agri-tech and food tech startups and facilitating them. And uh, the last aspect of digital farming I would like to share with you is uh, to support the establishment of agri-food uh, industry and chains within circular bioeconomy. And that uh, implies not just the use uh, digital agriculture or digital agriculture, it also implies to have to be to integrate those programs with the other digital related programs of the country or of the region. The best example being finance and all the programs related to uh, agriculture finance, providing micro insurance for farmers and so on. Uh, that means that from the farmer point of view, from the user point of view, as well as from the SME point of view, uh, those digital activities need to be uh, harmonized to get maximum impact. Sarah, we are running out of time. So I, it's my last screen. It's my yeah. last screen. So I, the last screen is really meant to wrap up uh, how could we bring further the North Africa Europe Alliance private sector cluster? Uh, what came out clearly is the need to set up first a setup of private sector networks and shared platforms built by local stakeholders. The, um, those exchanges 
uh, between uh, African countries and uh, European countries in terms of private sector players need to be structured. They exist, but they need to be institutionalized, need to harmonize and share their common needs and national region priorities. By institutionalizing them, they will have the tools to uh, express their common needs and uh, priorities to both R&I and the policymakers. SDG, the uh, private sector have clearly asked on more than one occasion to align with S national and SDG objectives. Funding, uh, many uh, topics and suggestions came from the private sector, not only the funders present, for the need of innovative funding schemes, including inviting private sector to fund, but with proper incentives. Uh, finally, uh, the two last points, R and I, the co-definition of modalities and participation to the R and I programs in FNSSA, that needs to be designed, of course. And finally, adapting. Uh, several suggestions were made of the possibility of adapting or, or twinning with European shared platforms such as the NFTP. The purpose being not to reinvent the wheel, but uh, to uh, use the last lessons learned in Europe and uh, use those lessons as well as means to facilitate, accelerate the teaming up AU EU. And thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Dora. And thank you. Thank you for highlighting the significant role that the private sector has. Uh, now, participants, knowing what they know now and having heard what Dora has explained explicitly, not just about the key aspects that the uh, private sector is, um, is engaged in and issues that they want uh, our platform to address, we want to go to our Metimeter question. And I think we'll put that up in, uh, right away so that we hear your it's an open-ended question. We hear your views uh, on the simple question of um, how can the private sector participate in a cooperation platform? You will glean a little bit from what Dora has presented, and also we are open to hear your views. Uh, Siam, let's run the meter 12, yes. please. Thank you. Exactly. So how can the private sector participate? in a cooperation platform. You can draw from what Dora has indicated uh, with a specificity for the Naya region, but we also want to hear what your thoughts are. So it's an open-ended question. We look forward to you incorporating uh, your inputs to this question. And again, not on the chat, chat box, but on the Mentimeter. Uh, CM, please load the Mentimeter port portal again. No one? Anybody? Somebody? Say something. Awesome. So I have a fast response. An innovation hub due to funding. That's awesome. The questions are... The question was better addressed by Dora. <laughs> thank you very much. Compliments <laughs> to our presenter. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So you responded. <laughs> okay. It says by investing money in research and development, that's also a good one. Uh, being in corporations, interesting thought. Uh, via well-elaborated communication process and infrastructure, fabulous. I think I also see co-funding. Uh, that's actually worth thinking about because you pull your resources together and the private sector is a good avenue for uh, resource mobilization. Uh, uh, what else do I have? I have participated in the collaborative platforms or clusters or innovation platforms considered as equal partners. I like the equal partner bit because I think also Dora alluded to that uh, genuine partnership is critical. Creating networks is also a good one as an investor. 
also fabulous. Um, so, so far we only have 19 uh, responses. We want the most of you, at least a majority of you, simple majority as they say uh, in political circle to be able to get to the next question. Good. We have connecting actors. Uh, so that's actually a good aspect so that people don't work in isolation. Uh, private sector can be a pillar of platform. I uh, didn't get that quite well. By being active or part of an initiative to constitute uh, citizen driven food uh, councils. Awesome. By investing, in, by investing money in research and development. That's awesome. That's also, I think, has been echoed before. They need to invest in research. Uh, someone just put in setup, uh, probably set up private sector alliances. That would also help. Awesome. So if you're new, if you've just joined us uh, after preliminary introduction to our sessions today, we're using our Mentimeter tool to be able to collect your views and have your say. So this will be presented in either open questions where we need to really understand what you think about the questions being asked. And also there'll be uh, word clouds to know what your popular vote is. And at the end of the day should be able to uh, help us understand uh, what your thoughts are in uh, creating an AU EU platform in the end. Recorded. Good. So we are at 36 out of 70. If I could get just four more, at least we'll go over the threshold of above 50%. Three more inputs, and then we can move. Organizing business trips. That's an interesting one. I think uh, in my country, they call them study, I think field study or something like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome, just one more input, then we can move to the next one. Collaborating effectively with all stakeholders. Yes, uh, the ownership of the platform is critical even for the private sector. They can be internet providers. That's an interesting thought. <laughs> so the interest, internet providers have a vote here. Thank you very much. So we've reached our threshold, which is good. So we can collect and collect these views to be able to address the question. So let's move on to Mentimeter 13. What question are we looking at, uh, 13? Thank you. Uh, what is the incentive uh, of the private sector to participate? What incentivizes them to be able to be part of a process? What do you think? Uh, I think Dora also indicated a few of what the NEA uh, private sector felt would be an incentive for them. But what do you think? Again, it's still an open, oh, this is a word cloud um, question. So let's see, just either one or just very brief phrases to see what you think. So access to knowledge is a good one. Mm -hmm. What else do you think? Come on, you can think on your feet <laughs> because you've just had uh, Dora's presentation. So that should have spurred some thoughts. Uh, I have knowledge cluster benefits, awesome. Especially if you are a private sector in the same sector, you're dealing with the same uh, issues, challenges, and opportunities. Uh -huh. They only have five. What are your thoughts? What is the incentive of the private sector to participate? I have corporate social. I think what's missing is corporate social responsibility. That would be a good one. New technologies. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Visibility, yes, because for the private sector, that is important uh, to publicize um what their products or services are profits <laughs> profits 
perhaps yeah. Jackie, uh, or to let the colleagues here know also, if you find that one keyword here is a very important one, you can repeat it and then it's, it will be shown here that this is an important point. Yeah. Uh, but please do it. Uh, we, we saw this in the last Good Morning session. There was uh, a very favorite. Uh, it, it was having Good Morning coffees. Uh, and in fact, this was one person who was constantly typing the same word. So that's not the exercise mm -hmm. here. Please, um, if you find one keyword here uh, very important, type it in um, again so that we get a rough uh, idea um, what is the... Um, the main focus here. Thank you, Jackie. Back to you. Yeah. Thanks, Stefan. Yes. So right now, so far, being part of a group is showing promise. Uh, and I think that goes to what Stefan and I keep calling the cluster um, uh, mechanism. Um, we have exchange of state of the art what? Complete your sentence. <laughs> If you leave it hanging, then we're not able to make out uh, what phrase that is. I see profits is still uh, also among the high incentives for the private sector. Awesome, I have 35 of you. Let's see if we can have some more. But with the person uh, who wrote exchange state of the art, uh, complete, complete that state of the art, technology, state-of-the-art processes, because that's also looking prominent. Awesome. So we are at uh, 39. Being part of a group is still leading. It seems to be critical. We can see your screen, uh, CM <laughs> colleagues. Hmm? Yeah, you got CM. Us, yeah, you got us out of the Mentimeter mode. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I, uh, CM, your screen is, I think you're on shared screen mode, so I can't see the rest of the slide. Uh, just indicate, okay, so we are 39, thank you. 42, awesome. Uh, three more, then we close this question as well. Uh, and I think essentially what we can take away from this question is being part of a group is critical. Uh, learning from each other is another one, exchange of the state of art something. So I'll assume it's either technology or processes or strategies. Uh, and then also I can see cluster. At the uh, as a runners up and profits as well. Okay, thank you very much for this question. Let's run Mentimeter 14. Awesome. So the question uh, we are asking at 14, also an open ended question, is how could a platform support capacity building? How could a platform support capacity building and private sector clusters. What do you think? If we had a platform that would bring all this together, how could it offer capacity building and support uh, the private sector clusters as well? Coordination of clusters is a good thing. That's a good place to start because if the efforts are not coordinated, then the clustering is lost. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, what are your thoughts? You have an opportunity to write several uh, statements. I think we have a maximum of 250 characters. So please feel free to do more than just one. Field trips would be, how could a platform support capacity building and private sector clusters? Field trips is an interesting one. Training, that's also a good one. Uh, coordination as featured again. Uh, mentorship, awesome. So you can uh, uh, ensure that there's uh, intra-learning within the clusters as well. Uh, vis visibility, I think that is. 
local capacity for innovation, mm -hmm. clear and focused communication. Yes, I think that is critical for most private sectors. Let's get some more. What are your thoughts? How could a platform support either capacity building and the private sector clusters? Open space meeting. Um, that's also good. So a platform would offer them open space to meet, uh, especially in a world where we've gone all virtual. So that would be good. Awesome. Organizing practical and theoretical trainings for the cluster. Twinning, that's a good one also, because then you get peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentorship. Provide some funding for cluster activities. Yes, that's also usually very much overlooked because it takes uh, resources to be able to make the clusters work. Mm -hmm. Experience facilitator for coordination in a related field. Awesome, innovation hubs. I think training keeps featuring again and again. So that's also a good one. Exchange about the cluster availability. Uh -huh. Sort of clusters, the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the clusters is also seen as critical. Mm -hmm. Awesome. South to South partnership, also sometimes overlooked, but also very critical. Providing information and registration data to the private sector, a space for private advertising to communicate. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I just need at least two more, then we're able to move uh, to the next agenda item. Understanding the private sector is important. Yes, because you can't coalesce around an issue that you're not familiar with. Funding a good project, and here good project is the point of emphasis, because good is relative, as you know, it depends on which private so sector we are talking to. Uh, logistics, uh, also an interesting thought. Uh, awesome. So I think we've reached our threshold. We are at 44, and Stefan, I hand back the floor to you. Again, I just in concluding, saying that your input is really critical because it helps us collate and galvanize what we want to do when we are building a platform. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you very much, Jackie and indeed, This was a very interesting session in particular, the suggestion to write a SWOT uh, analysis of clusters. I would say this is indeed something where all are kindly invited uh, to contribute, um, not only in the NAIA working group for the private sector, we are about to establish a group for the West Africa EU lines as well. That would be a very interesting approach to write a SWOT analysis for clusters. Let's come um, to our next uh, agenda item. So um, we have here Prudence Makura from uh, NRF South Africa and Henning Knipschild, BLE Germany, who will address um, the potential funding approaches for uh, the platform. Please Prudence and Henning, uh, the floor is yours. I stop sharing my screen. And please uh, show your slides. You're mostly welcome, please. Mm -hmm. Something is coming up, it takes a while. You can also use your Mentimeter uh, questions during your session as you like. Yes, please switch to the full screen mode and then it will be perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have the full screen mode now and we can hear you, Prudence. Okay, thank you so much, Stefan. Um, I'm going to switch my video on because yesterday, not yesterday, so on Tuesday, I forgot to switch my video on. And um, there were a few private chats that reminded me that uh, my video was not on, but I could not see the chat when you are on full screen mode. So I apologize to those um, colleagues um, that attended the Tuesday uh, Good Morning meeting. It was nothing personal to the colleagues. I just forgot to switch my video on. So I make sure that I remember um, for this morning. Okay, so um, this presentation here today um, is between myself and Henning. Um, I'm with the National Research Foundation of South Africa and my colleague Henning 
is based at the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food based in Germany. Um, so the way in which we thought about this presentation um, was to divide it into um, two main parts. Um, so the first part will look at the type of a platform that we want um, to establish. And this is not um, something that we say we want as the Leap for FNSSA consortium, but this is something that is based on all the consultations that we've had with the stakeholders. So this is what we together, everybody in this, in this um, Zoom meeting uh, saying that we want uh, to see with this platform. And based on that, then we will move into how we can then um, mobilize resources to support what we say we want. You know, um, what we did on Tuesday was to outline how we're going about uh, mobilizing stakeholders. Uh, we showed the methodologies that we are using to mobilize stakeholders, and we requested also some few ideas uh, from uh, the participants uh, on how we can improve uh, the manner in which we mobilize partners. But today, the focus will be more on how can we mobilize the resources. So uh, before we get to the part of mobilizing resources, I think I th we thought it was important that we first outline and remind each other, what is it that we want? What kind of a platform uh, do we want to see? And then we can move into how can we resource this platform um, that we want to put in place. And once we're done with that, um, then we'll move into the Mentimeter exercise where we now source ideas uh, from all the participants on the different kinds of uh, funding approaches that we could look into that could be useful for such a platform that we want to put together. And this is very important, colleagues, because this takes us now to Good Morning Five, you know, where now we talk to the funding organizations or the ministries that uh, fund research and innovation, you know, to look at the, all these different approaches that are put on the table and to look at what makes sense for collaboration. So I think it, it, Wouldn't, it links uh, excuse your, me. Your, your slides are not moving, yeah, just in case yes, if you move the slides. No, it's intentional. I haven't started okay. with a formal <laughs> presentation. <laughs> okay, thanks, Stefan. Um, so I was just quickly outlining, okay, maybe that was not quick, but I was trying to outline just the thinking behind this presentation so that you follow what we are trying to do here. So um, now I am trying to move slides, Stefan. So if they're not moving, please let me know. Okay, I try to move the slide. It's not even moving from my side. If it doesn't work with the keyboard, try the mouse, the, the, the scrolling wheel. It seems that Zoom interferes with PowerPoint in a way. I'm connecting the, I'm trying to the mouse, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try now. Doesn't move. Now it moves. Second slide. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So, um, this is the type of a platform that we say that uh, we want to put in place. Mm -hmm. Is um, we arguing for a dynamic network of different partnerships that goes beyond boundaries and for sustainable development. And uh, one of the things that have been emphasized throughout all the consultations, the issue of coherence, is at the center stage of everything that, that we're doing. And the idea with this platform really is just to harmonize our efforts, to harmonize our actions, to make sure that we have a unified, integrated, um, integrated whole. So I just need to move everybody to move the pictures because I can't see all my slides, or, um, the entire slide. Or can I minimize it? Okay. Okay, good. So this is the type of a of a of a partnership we want to we want to see. Um, I've decided to put some quotations for inspirational purposes. Uh, nothing more than that. Um, so the idea is that I'm hoping that 
when you read this, you are inspired to even want to be part of this partnership and contribute in developing and building this partnership. Yes. So, um, so you can read those uh, quotations at your own leisure or when you go to the LIPO FNSSA website and you get hold of the slides, then you can go through those quotations. The emphasis will be on the left hand, uh, is it the right, the right hand side of the screen, not necessarily the quotations. So um, the most important thing about this uh, partnership is the issue of co-creation. Um, so um, stakeholders have really emphasized that uh, inclusivity is very important and we must understand what inclusivity means. You know, so um, this has been emphasized and this is something that also as LIPO FNSSA partners, we've thought about it uh, uh, on it very seriously. And also the issue of interface, the interface between evidence-based science policy, industry, and society, you know, has been emphasized a lot. Um, and the fact that the partnership or the platform is intercontinental does not necessarily mean that uh, we do not look into regional, national, and local challenges, you know. So um, many partners have uh, indicated that if we do not um, address the regional and the national and the local challenges, then the platform will not be seen as that important for many colleagues. So although it's an intercontinental platform, it should also address challenges at different levels. And also the long-term issue um, has always been emphasized. Hence, you uh, had a lot of uh, presentations on Tuesday about the cyclic programming. And this is one way in which we are trying to address the issue of long term uh, within the partnership. And uh, issue of impact, that the, the platform must make some form of impact for sustainable uh, change. And this is why you heard that um, when, we pre when we presented, uh, when Stefan presented on Tuesday, he emphasizes the issue of the TCIP, the theory of change and impact pathway is central uh, to the platform and has been emphasized um, it has been emphasized by different stakeholders. So it's not just about um, it just about making impact, but it's how you sustain the change. And the transformation has to be seen at different levels, at an individual level, at a system level, at the societal level, and at an industry level. These are the issues that have come out of the, of the consultations. And the issue of flexibility has been emphasized a lot as well, that the platform should be flexible and it should be a big network, but that is inclusive of different types of partnerships within the network. And I think this was one of the issues that was also emphasized uh, on Tuesday when we had the first uh, Good Morning meeting. Also the importance of having a governance structure because there has to be um, a structure that drives, you know, the platform. So this has been thought about um, a lot, and there's been ideas that have been thrown around of how such a coordination hub can look like for such a platform that we are looking for. So there are suggestions that have been put on the table that we are that are being looked at um, uh, to drive such a such a huge network of different types of uh, partnerships. And also um, there's been uh, different ideas on the type of activities that this uh, platform uh, should invest in. And some of these things, obviously we've already started uh, working on them. I mean, the issue of thematic priority setting, um, one of the, the working group on TCIP, for example, uh, on Tuesday, you know, spoke a lot about, about this. And this involves uh, the exercise of situational analysis and, also the issue of mobilizing uh, partners. I mean, we've already started on the issue of mobilizing partners, aligning existing programs and strategies. Um, also the situational analysis comes in there and also looking at the different approaches for mobilizing resources. And this is where we are today. And this is what I want to, uh, what Henning and I wants to emphasize for today, for today's meeting is to look at all these different approaches that we can use uh, to mobilize the resources for research and innovation within uh, this long-term platform. Um, so Henning will start his uh, presentation looking at some 
of the approaches that we've been thinking about. But the idea here also is to involve you as participants with the uh, Mentimeter to give us some of the ideas of what you think could be the approaches that, that we use. And this, then we will take all of these ideas that we are putting on the table and discuss them also on Friday, no, not Friday, so on the 15th, sorry, on the 15th of February, when we have the Good Morning Five uh, with the funders collaboration. We'll look at some of these different approaches at that uh, Good Morning meeting. So as you can see, um, colleagues, from all of the, um, consultations that we've done with all the stakeholders, everything leads up to what we have today. Everything leads up to what was discussed uh, on Tuesday as the model that we are using you know, for this partnership. So work has already started. Um, it has already started with the different working groups um, doing the different aspects um, of building this partnership. Uh, this morning, we just heard from Dora who presented on the working group number four, the private sector working group uh, for the Nye um, um, region. So this is just to say that this, all these consultations and um, they form actually the part of the, of, the, of, the, of the PNC. So we are already working into developing this, this platform. So now um, I will ask Henning to come in now and just present some of the ideas that we have on how we can start working on different approaches for funding uh, within this, this uh, platform. Henning. Thank you very much. Can it, uh, okay. So, so um, our main point here is that of course we have all kinds of different approaches to transnational funding. And I've shown just two extremes here and I'd like to open the discussion on that. For example, on the left side, we have got uh, a centralized call, like for example, in Leap Agri or other era nets, you have national funders, you might have international funders linked to it, and they address their, uh, let's call it researchers. For example, the national risk funders, they address their national researchers. And in such a centralized approach, then these researchers uh, who are linked to different funders, they actually uh, set up consortia and put in place the research. Um, this kind of activity uh, works, but it is linked to a large number of issues. It already starts with the fact that we have different uh, Fish, fiscal years in different nations, that we have different funding rules, and, uh, and it's very difficult sometimes to harmonize it, but in any case, this is one of the ways how it can be set up. Um, it is not easy for these centralized calls to integrate uh, actors from innovation like private sector, NGO, farmers, and so on. Uh, this is also due to the fact because these calls are not ongoing. They normally just uh, have a duration of three years of something, and there are no services normally in place which are really uh, provide knowledge management services to integrate these actors from practice. Um, what can be done is, uh, uh, of course, uh, within the call, the researchers who plan the research can be asked to plan the integration of these actors into research. But often there's also a problem because many funds don't even have eligible funding to allow for knowledge management and the integration of the work of private sectors, NGOs and farmers. So, so this is one way which requires a high amount of coordination. Uh, on the right, you can see the other extreme. For example, I could now say, okay, I want to work together with NRF where Prudence works. We involve actors from practice. We involve researchers and we get going with our tools to fund research. 
So uh, having these different, uh, let's say, perspectives in mind, of course, you have all options between these extremes. And this is actually where I would like to open the discussion now. And to start off with that, I'd like to ask for the first Mentimeter question. And from the Mentimeter questions after these, we will then uh, open the micros and we can have our inputs. So please, the first Mentimeter questions. So, so you have been shown in these two workshops, the TCIP instrument. Um, and yesterday we explained quite a lot of the components. And for us, the first question is, how do you think, how much is the importance for investors? We're trying to actually uh, create interfaces for all actors, for practice, we try to integrate uh, interfaces to set up uh, alliances of actors to launch research. And um, we are trying to set up a structure where we have a circular activity. So, uh, so where we can actually um, follow up on the research outputs communicate the research outputs to, to practice and then learn from what has been implemented in use. So please, um, please now we have nine. I'd like to have some feedback from this. Mm. For us, it is also important in this tool to address research demand at a uh, sub-regional level. So, this is the reason why we are working with sub-regional uh, organizations who really uh, know very well the research which is relevant in the area and which and these organizations can also involve all relevant partners. So give me some more comments and then I will jump over to the next question. Any more comments? Okay, what do you think, colleagues? Shall we jump over to the next question or is it too early? Last 10 seconds. Okay. Colleagues, we are 85 person here. Please check in the chat. There is the link. Just click on it and give us your feedback, please. Okay. Then let's move to the next question. Thank you very much. Um, you have now uh, learned a bit about the components of this tool, which we are presenting, the TCIPA and monitoring evaluation at learning tool. Um, from what you see up to now, which are the components you would improve? We have presented already that we have set up our, um, our, our, our networks in the, in, in the sub-regions. Um, mm, and we tr what we're trying to do is here to develop a, a good concept, a sound concept for priority setting and then involvement of, of actors. Um, we're trying to create an ownership. We're trying to uh, create a sense of, let's say, agile project planning. And uh, can you please give your, imp in your, your inputs here? Let me see here now. Please type your answers. So we have the theory of change and impact pathways, TCI pay tool. 
What are your comments? I see that this component of, uh, after all this time of pandemic, that this component of coming together <laughs> at field days comes quite often. Um, you're saying you don't understand uh, the question. Okay. Um, from from our we, uh, the basis of our uh, platform aspects which are presenting here is the the TCIP which is a theory theory of change tool which we use in the subregions and here uh, we have a, a, a frame in which we bring together the priorities of a subregion and then communicate them to be the basis of a joint research program. So this is actually uh, what we're trying to promote here. And to this, we link a monitoring, evaluation, and learning system because it is very important to build on the research outputs and to sustain uh, the use of the research, uh, the knowledge coming from research in future projects. Um, any comments with regards to this question? Clarify the link of the TCIP and the long-term mail concept and process. We, we more explained that yesterday, right? Do we have time to do this now, Stefan? I think it would be great um, if we can just give a brief, just a reminder, because maybe some of the colleagues who are participating here today were not there. Tuesday when these issues were discussed. Yeah. Would you like to have, we have a... like one minute, uh, two minutes, just to outline the TCIP? Well, to explain the TCIP, you mean, Annie? Yeah, yeah just to explain, okay. because even when you look at the chat room, people yeah. are really struggling to yeah. grasp the concept of the TCIP. Okay. So if we can just for one minute. Okay, I'll just briefly indeed. Thank you so much. TCIP is an instrument that has been uh, used in the LEAP Agri project already for the funded projects. And it is an instrument, a dynamic instrument uh, for planning. It consists, in fact, of uh, two uh, steps, two elements. Um, uh, consider a document and you start with a, a short situation analysis. What is going on? Where are the problems? What are the causes of the problems and underlying um, uh, knowledge uh, gaps and so on and so forth? This is a situation analysis. This could be also enriched with a SWOT analysis about a situation, uh, but this is in fact the first chapter of a theory of change and impact pathways. What follows then is um, the, are the research and innovation agendas uh, to be defined coming from this um, situations from the problems, um, as well as the uh, capacity building um, agendas and to define the desired impact pathways. So you have the research and innovation and capacity building agendas, and then you define what are the expected outputs, what are the expected outcomes and what are the expected impacts. And this as a whole is a theory of change and impact pathway, which is um, the starting point of a program cycle and also the beginning of a monitoring evaluation and learning concept. How is that? A theory of change and impact pathway with the desired impact pathways um, require certain indicators so that you can measure in a monitoring process, um, not only the outputs, but also the outcomes and the impacts. And um, therefore the monitoring evaluation and learning concept um, has to be developed right at the beginning of a program cycle together with the indicators also for the impacts. And this might go beyond um, uh, a, a project uh, and therefore the period uh, for a program cycle is so far envisaged for around 10 years so that uh, after um, project results are available, um, um, the uh, effect 
of the project outputs um, could unfold and could be monitored so that at the end of a program cycle, you do not only have an output analysis, but also an outcome and an impact analysis. And this um, then is uh, feeding into the learning process, which also has to be defined um, in advance. So imagine um, a very harmonic uh, cyclic approach started with the theory of change and impact pathway accompanied with a monitoring evaluation uh, and learning process so that that at the end of a, a cycle you uh, learned uh, with this process along the theory of change and impact pathway thank you back to you Henning and Budens thank you very much maybe it would be good that we provide again that document after the workshop and uh I would say then we go over to the next question, please. Question number 17. Thank you very much for your inputs here. So uh, which methods have you used to assure accountability for the use of funds between actors? We have different aspects here. We have very much the aspect that uh, we're working in a transnational environment and uh, that uh, this accountability has to be proved. So this is really the thinking of funders. We have very much the aspect uh, that, in, in, for example, in, in most nations, it is not even eligible that, uh, that researchers outside of that nation are funded. We have very much the aspect that, uh, the, the rules for national eligibility are, are very strict. So what we are actually lose, you're looking for here is um, what experience have you got to fund transnational funds and to make it easier? And, uh, and it goes into the annual audit. Okay, that is interesting. Any more topics? So you will have an annual budgeting yeah, impact assessment. Okay, if you have a joint impact assessment, then you can always actually prove uh, the accountability. This is very good. You have a joint set of deliverables. So you're actually going for joint programming. This is good. Uh, the awareness training. Uh, we can go, I, I'd like to take this up later because in a minute we'll open up the... Um, the micros and then maybe you can explain this awareness training uh, a set of common indicators is very good to manage actually the accountability at transnational level thank you for that um, uh, okay we have the ODA compliance statement this is also very good linking your uh, research and funding instruments to international uh, standards um the outcome led uh, research programming is very good then uh, there is a good proof for the use of funds um okay you have um you have Krishan coming in with a comment most funding and international cooperation institutes are more uh sorry country are moving to a more country-based approach. So transnational intervention may still have to address the national agenda as well, in addition to demonstrating the value add of a transnational approach. I think this is very true because in the budgets at national level, there's a strong competition between using the uh, funds for national purposes and transnational purpose. So, and, and they're not well linked off so uh, the, the priorities are cross-cutting here. Thank you for that. Um, so um, what we'll do now is, I think we go over to the next question because then afterwards in plenary, we can discuss these issues. Thank you very much. Can we go to the question 18, please?
So which methods have, no, we're not here with question 18 yet, right? Colleagues from Siam, could you please move to the question 18? Thank you so much. Ah, thank you very much. Which methods have you used to uh, assure the selection of demand-driven topics? So colleagues, you know, one of the big goals here we have with the TCIP to actually address uh, the, the topics for research, which really come from uh, the, the, the actors which, which we're targeting. So we are targeting uh, that research is put into use. And that's why we're very interested in identifying uh, research topics, which then have high relevance uh, at the level to be really put into place. And this is why we're working together with uh, sub-regional organizations who have good contact to the relevant actors, which may be actually uh, requested to provide the input. So this is very interesting. I have action research here. Uh, I would like to ask you to, 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 to mention this later again. Uh, maybe also explain later the discussion, the different modes of stakeholder involvement, which are possible to provide really active input of the, the, the actors. Uh, we have the gap analysis. This is good. This is more or less what we're doing in the TCIP instrument. Um, I'm not sure what you mean with the with co-design. Does it mean that we have a joint design of uh, of a program? I'd like to ask you to 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 highlight that once the micros are on. Um, the co-funding with nations is exactly how you bring together the different uh, priorities at national level. Um, what else do we have? The call for innovative ideas. I like that very much. And I'd like to hear from you once the micros are on, uh, what uh, can be actually done in this field. Um, so I'll type it down. Research, action research, any more inputs? Okay. Henning, the session should last further 10 minutes here. Yeah? Okay. Please. Thank you. Um, let's go on to the next question there. Uh, which other methods of investment than pooling budgets would you suggest to consider? So this is actually uh, aiming at that question I asked you before. Um, do you think centralized calls is one of the things uh, uh, which are important? Uh, or uh, do you see other possibilities, for example, like pooling in-kind uh, uh, resources? Um, how do you see can, is it easier to tap national funds, especially in countries where no programs are really set up in such a way that they can provide input? Please give your input here. And Stefan, I have a question to you. Uh, and normally we had a bit more time, but we were later. How do we deal with that one? Yeah, I added already five minutes to your meeting. So my meeting is finalized in five minutes, you say, right? Uh, in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, okay. In 10 minutes, please. So have you got two more comments? And then we can maybe open up the micros and talk about it. Investment programs and outreach. Okay. So maybe colleagues from CHAM, can we um, open the micros and I will open my screen. I'd like to share my screen and then we can open the discussion a bit and everyone can have their say. Everyone can talk now. Everyone can talk now. Okay. Uh, should we keep the Mentimeter on the background or you prefer to see? 
I would pr prefer to share my screen now. Okay. So, please, colleagues. Um, so, I have actually here on the screen, I have uh, um, I'm shown you our, our, our small scheme. And here below in green, you have the questions which we highlighted in the Mentimeters already. Um, please, I ask you now to just uh, speak um, and, and, and comment on the, the comments you made in the Mentimeter already. For example, uh, I'd be very interested to hear from the, the partner who talked about action research to provide demand-driven topics. Maybe we can start with that one. And then uh, uh, please try to, to provide your input to the discussion. So anybody, please, you can speak now. I think the micros are all off. Gaetano, can the, the people, oh, now the microphones are going on. Colleagues, can the, the, the participants turn on their microphone or is it? Yes, I think they can. Okay. So who would like to comment on our, on our Mentimeter questions, colleagues? Please support me here. I'd like to hear your say. No hands up, nobody willing. Um, so there please let, yes. Two raise and. Okay, I cannot <laughs> see them. Can you, uh, please, Stephen Adigu. Yes. You can uh, get on your mic and you can talk, of course. Please. Yeah, good, 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 good afternoon or good morning, everyone. I'm Steven Adeogun from Nigeria. Um, I want to speak or add my voice to how fund can be pulled together for research. And I, my, in the Mentimeter, I contributed that there's need for involvement of private organizations in pulling funds together to support research in Africa. Uh, if uh, uh, in my interaction with some of these um, private organizations, you you find out that most of them are not really interested in researches that are a big base. I, I was at a point I was discussing with a friend who happened to be a regional director with uh, one of the network providers, network providers, and I was you know trying to find out their opinion with respect to research development. And he told me categorically that they don't have um, a lot to do with agriculture. And I asked him, I said, you people can, you can sponsor a program like um, um, BB Niger and all sorts, but you're not ready to sponsor agriculture. That is not the best. I think we need to look at the best approach to bring in these private organizations because, because at the end of the day, they are also benefactor of successes in agricultural activities. So I think it's high time we look at how to actually encourage their collaboration with public organization and international organization in trying to source for research uh, funding for our research activities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Leonid, Leonid, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. Well, I'm going to comment on actual research, which uh, I collaborate with, and uh, it's to say that uh, um, research is never going to be neutral. And I think it's very important that in the definition of the, the research project and uh, up to the end, in which it corresponds to uh, publications and uh, uh, dissemination of research, uh, and valorization of what's found in, in, uh, in the research, uh, all stakeholders should be involved. 
of course, differentiating the different roles and interests that uh, everyone has in it, but we have to be part of it to really uh, appropriate or get the, the right appropriation of, uh, uh, from the design to the publication, the whole process of research. And I think that's capital. And we have to make it uh, to, to work in practice. Fundamental yeah. research is important. It's uh, indispensable, I would say. But at the same time, it has to be connected with applied research, which respond to social needs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So last point, Dora. Yes, Benning, please. This is Siam. Yes. Please, can you zoom a little bit your screen in order to have a clear idea of what are you writing? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Dora, please comment. Um, before Dora comes in, sorry, Henning, I uh, uh, again made a mistake. Uh, of course, we are in uh, GMT time. Uh, you have one hour more. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, colleagues. So, uh, so Dora, I'm... you have one hour, please. <laughs> okay, that was a new statement, uh, not from my side, but uh, sorry. Forgive, please. <laughs> Go ahead. Dora, please. Dora is not there at the moment. Any other here, comments? Sorry. Ah, okay. I'm here, I'm here. So I would like to share with all of you the following. Uh, I believe that um, R and I need to better sell themselves to the private sector at large, farmers' organizations, uh, agribusinesses, startups, uh, in terms of what they what can they do for them, and if they manage to do so, by really seriously uh, studying the needs of the private sector, developing programs which really makes sense for the different categories of private sector and their priorities. Uh, because of what we do as an NGO and part of LEAP for FLSSA, we've seen so many projects among the ones developed by whether the EU, the USAID, same story, which are in other planets compared to the needs of the private sector. So I do believe that if the research communities at large really work on those needs and their prioritization and, and invest into designing what could be the models, I mean, the very clear topic which came out is the issue of seeds and the lack of availability of quality seeds. Uh, in some countries, it takes 10 years to um, register a new type of seed. So really go to the roots of the problems. And once this is aligned, then I'm pretty sure that the funders will run after us. That's what I wanted to share. Thank you very much. Um, we have Mohammed Abdullah. Please. Yes, thank you very much. From just, okay. Uh, just one, one, one idea here. The, the, the call, the call for project for research project. We are experiencing in in the region are very much time consuming and very complicated. It can take almost a quarter or sometime half of a year to work on that with a dedicated team. And finally, with many time, no results. I don't know what is the problem. So this is something we, we should avoid on, 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 on 
uh, on this process. Thank you very much. I have a question here. It's you're actually meaning, let's say, uh, you, you, you're addressing bureaucratic aspects, eligibility criteria, selection processes, and, and, and all this business, right? So, so, so this is where you're saying that it's uh, also very expensive for the researchers to contribute to the calls because they have to invest such a lot of time, right? Yes, it's all together. In fact, eligibility basis and it's, it's very uh, sometimes dif uh, it's different from one call to another, but all uh, converge on, 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 on complex uh, and, and time consuming approach. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. We have Bio Eno. Please. Is that your name? Sorry, how do I pronounce it? Bio Enoch Kwabena. Hello. Hello. Yes. So this is Aaron T. Asari from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. Okay. Yes. Uh, I want to add to what Dora um, contributed. Um, over the years, we realized that um, most of the times we carry out research with um, products in the area of um, developing new varieties mm -hmm. and uh, seeds. However, the indication shows that sometimes we don't get the uh, private sector appreciating the outcome or seed producers patronizing the product. We realized a gap that in the process of development or our research, we don't involve them. And so at the end of the day, their contribution has not been part of the product that turns out. And it is very important that on the onset of our researches, we get the private sector's interest and their, um, their, their needs and expectations. And so when the product is uh, coming out, already they are part of it. So when it, 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 it comes out, they will participate. They will also contribute you know, to support it. However, I must say that in most instances, the private sector is faced with uh, uh, startup funds. And that is a, a major problem, especially in the seed sector. Thank you very much. Could you highlight this question with the startup funds? I didn't really get that one. Yes, the startup, startup funds. Some of the, um, in the private sector, like the seed producers, yeah. uh, in, the, in, the, in the developing countries have challenged with funds to start up, you know, um, large scale production. Okay. And so in packaging our research uh, and then uh, so sourcing for funds or projects, we also have to package them in, in, in the, in the um, what you call planning so that when we come out with seeds, already there's fund for the uh, seed producer in the private sector to start with in terms of commercial production. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Krishan, please. Thanks, Henning. Um, I'm just going to share some thoughts as I was looking at your diagram and uh, some of the things I've been reading about. Um, I think the approach, well, since you mentioned that this, this session is really about preparing you for this session with the, the donors, I think one observation is that over the last, let's say, decade or last five years at least, a lot of the donor institutions are moving towards this country-based approach. Um, you look at the CGIR, they're talking about having country representation or country offices or some form of country presence, yeah? The, the UN system is talking about consolidating all the UN interventions into one country-based program. IFAD is also looking at, you know, country programs. So all, all, the, um, the, 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 all those who might be considering, you know, supporting agricultural research and innovation seem to be adopting this model of looking at the country level. And yet here we are trying to look at this 
AU EU platform, which is really looking at a, a, a larger, broader, as you mentioned, transnational scale. So uh, even the FAO is the same thing. They all they all represent. They all uh, are responding to the needs of their member states. But I'm glad to see that recently F, FAO, for example, is asked, has asked Farah to facilitate a series of discussions about how can regional organizations and sub-regional organizations facilitate their interventions, the implementation of the strategy to be more uh, focused on their, or to have more impact at the country level. So they're, they're, they're talking about implication of these regional and sub-regional organizations, which is what you also said, you're working with these partners. So, and, that, and that's why I mentioned that in your model, you have the two extremes, the call is, is being, Le on the left hand side, you see that the call is put out to be very broad, and we are leaving it to the members of the, 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 the membership of our networks to create a consortium. On the right hand side, you have a, a, con a consortium that is already well represented, well, well representative of the different stakeholders you would really like to see, you know, being involved in the research and innovation process. So the, the, the challenge now is whether these donors on, on this next meeting you have on the 15th understand this the same way. And I've just also been reading about this whole process of innovation, you know, innovation ecosystems and the transitions. You know, how do you change the mode of thinking or the mode of operation from one model to the other? And perhaps it might be useful to ask them whether they, in their, the next rounds of funding, they would like also to fund the, 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 the part that brings the consortia to come up and formulate better, um, so better programs or better proposals for, for, for research and innovation, which then doesn't leave the onus to the parties to come up with a proposal. As somebody said, it's very bureaucratic because the onus of finding the linkages is being left to the people who put write up the proposal, but instead, have part of the funding mechanism enhancing the collaborative nature of these parties so that the quality of the proposal is much better and will be, will be more impactful at the end. And I guess this is where this platform is actually able to facilitate this process. So I, I see the benefit of what we are trying to do, but I don't see the way people are operating now sort of converging or being able to accept this as a as an innovation what they call as you know the 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 innovation niche that will challenge the regime which is the regime is the current way of doing things so mm -hmm. there's a period of transition that we need to factor in now whether these donors have to accept that they have to co-learn with us with over a certain period as we're establishing this platform that there is a need to understand that this new mode of operation is actually going to be beneficial to all of us. Um, it may not be, this, this, this suggestion may not be relevant to what you're trying to discuss now, but I think um, it's important to keep that in mind as we discuss is that we are all talking about this mode of operating this platform, but uh, we are still stuck with a few ideas, but we are still not, they're still not well connected together that others can also see it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So actually you're saying is that the, one of the activities of the platform um, should very much be addressing these lacking, lacking linkages and lacking activities which, 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 uh, which don't work within the networks, like also the colleagues who said that there's a, a lack of integrating private sector. So that a platform... Uh, really addresses these missing links and works like a catal catalyst to, to, to push really uh, pragmatically the project work. This is also uh, here what our colleague from SILS said that the projects are too time consuming okay. and, and that the researchers can really cannot get going because of so many, let's say, bureaucratic hurdles. Yeah, and I think these are the, the bureaucratic uh, processes you, oops, am I muted? No, we can hear okay. you. Yeah. 
So the bureaucratic, bureaucratic process you mentioned, or the people that they perceive is that because we are not equipped to talk or to, to interact vertically along those hierarchies. So the onus is left then to us putting up a consortium together to find the partners at their different levels. And, and I think part of the role of the platform will have to be that we will facilitate the debates and the discussions up you know, vertically along this hierarchy as well. And that's where, again, the importance of working with the regional and sub-regional partners to facilitate the discussions so that we can we know who to escalate to to be able to contact, contact others. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, in the last, what well, well, no, sorry, H, the HPL high level, HL, yeah, HPLD. high level panel of experts, yeah? Then 2019, the one about agroecology and innovative approaches, they talk about this concept of agency. And I think uh, the, the, the one factor that we can all agree on is that we're all about empowering the stakeholders to, to have agency. That means they have a say in terms of determining the future of the work, the prioritization and the future and the impact of the work that they want to do. And you know, whether you're talking about a country level or a region, the, 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 the word agency is something that we can all sort of um, coalesce around. And everyone will say, yes, it is important for the stakeholders to be empowered. And therefore, what are the ways to empower the stakeholders is what we can then bring these people around together. And if it means that, if it means that the donors have to find a, 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 a period of funding for the transition period of better coordination, and you said you use the word coherence in the approach, is also something we need to, to look into. Thanks for that. Thank you very much. Um, so, Bio, Eno, are you here? You're in the forest. Or where good. are you? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, but please, my name is Bio Eno Kobna from Ghana. Um, I'm very happy to join this platform. Form. But my answer, I'm pleading so that we can use it for research programs. Ghana, for instance, last I designed a questionnaire, research questionnaire. When you go to many institutions, they don't have the primary data for you to go for the secondary data. Example now, cashew is one of the leading cash crop in Africa. But when you go to Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Agriculture, you will not get the data or total number of youth engaged in cashew production. We don't have it. Total number of cashew farm covered in the land of Ghana, we don't have them. We don't know the, the stages of the cashew trees in Ghana. We don't know the total tonnage the farmers themselves produce in their areas. We, the financial management of the farmers is very poor. So end of the year, when you ask a farmer, how many kilos of cashew not do you sell? They don't know because they don't keep records. So in agri sector, I think most of the private sectors they are not investing in the uh, agri sector. So I'm, I'm appealing to you so that we can get the platform which will assist the research programs, especially on the agri sector, so that we can use that one to encourage the farmers. Now the government cannot provide jobs for all the youth, but if the youth engage themselves in those areas like cashew I'm talking about in Ghana now, end of the year and the person is able to manage his or her financially properly. He may know that, oh, the whole year, this is the money I got, I get from my farm. So comparing to somebody who is a government worker, his or her total 
let's say gross salary for the whole year, he can know that, oh, if I mean, if I take the Greek seriously, I can get more money than those in the government sector. So those youth will not push pressure. We lost him. Or maybe later I can ask him to summarize this. On the government. Sorry, we cannot hear you. Uh, they would Mary. rather go into agriculture. That's the suggestion. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we heard most of what you said. I tried to put it here. Um, ah, okay. may, maybe we ask the next colleagues and then you can come in with more comments, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Mary Idobu, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. I just want to add my voice to the issue of uh, engaging the private sector or sectors from the onset of the project. I want to share my experience in one of the IDRC projects that I was involved in for a period of eight years. We tried working on underutilized under vegetables and we came up with innovative technologies like uh, microdosing of fertilizer, developing and storage of uh, uh, vegetable seeds and also information on propagation and some other uh, agronomic uh, activities. And with this, the farmers started producing vegetables, quality ones, but the yield was huge. And now we're looking for opticals. So we visited biscuit producing company, companies introducing the vegetables to them because we also did some method and food science also worked on it on how to, we can incorporate it into um, pastries. But the company refused taking it that if they start taking incorporating vegetables, the cost of production will increase and the children that are buying it will not be able to buy. So I see the aspect of communication and dialoguing and involvement of private sectors at the commencement of the projects and also the policy uh, atmosphere to support this. So when we come up with scientific proven findings, we need government uh, policies to back it up for it to, for people to key into it and it can in, translate into a national uh, development. Also in Nigeria, government is giving out money to farmers like a borrower under borrower program. But these farmers don't have the knowledge. Instead of giving input or giving money alone, they need to be trained. But this, this is not, uh, has not been addressed properly. So I see our platform, this current platform, as one of the uh, uh, platform that we assist. And if these uh, points are incorporated, it will also help to strengthen our points in getting funders to accept and collaborate with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. So who's, thank you very much. We have Stephen here and then we have Stefan, two Stevens. Please, Stephen Adeogu. Stephen, are you there? Maybe we could. Yeah, sorry, uh, please. Sorry, please, I'm here. Good yes. afternoon once again, everybody. Good afternoon once again. Um, I just want to lend my voice to certain issues. 
um, first and foremost, with respect to um, agricultural development and the uh, innovation system, I, I noticed that um, in Africa generally, the farmers are aging, and uh, we need to be proactive in the area of encouraging youth to take up uh, agricultural activities. And um, I think it's getting to a point that we need to strategize and try to make agricultural insects so that it will be attractive to our youth and they'll be willing to be involved in um, agricultural activities. So that's one area I want us to, to, to look at as we move forward um, in this program. Then secondly, uh, with respect to innovation system development, I've noticed this gap existing between the innovation developers and the innovation transfer. Um, we, we need to make her research base to be um, collaborative and participatory. So that at the beginning of any innovation um, development, there's need to, to have um, a kind of um, holistic view and also um, involving all the necessary stakeholders. So that at the end of the day, you don't develop um, um, innovation that end on the shelf. I will not get to the end users of such uh, innovation. These are things that we need to look. I think these are things I think we need to consider uh, as we move um, forward in this um, project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Stefan, please. Thank you very much, Henning. Uh, I'm referring to the comment that has been made uh, with regard to the country-centered approach of funders currently versus the transnational approach. My question is here to the colleagues, are there experiences with regard um, to the coordination of clusters? Um, I'm raising this question because uh, one of the assumptions of the polycentric uh, approach for coordinating clusters um, is that, uh, for example, on the national level, there are different uh, stakeholders active and with a better coordination with the clustering um, for funds, for example, could be pooled in a more efficient way. And also agreements can be found on, on how and where to invest. So is there, are there some experiences uh, from the colleagues here in this meeting with regards to building clusters um, and in particular with regards to clusters of funders on a national level? because that is um, indeed what could address these um, fragmentation of country-centered approaches uh, and the transnational approach that we are uh, working towards here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any answers to this? Well, well I've been raising my hand, uh, Henning. <laughs> Yes, I know. I was just asking whether because uh, it's Stefan in asked... relation to what, Henny, to what uh, Stefan was has said. Yes, I was not meaning to neglect you. I just wanted to ask. I know. I know. <laughs> please, I know. Please, please, Dora. <laughs> please, your comments. <laughs> well, um, I see that we may might fall into the question of this or that, whereas the answer is this and that the reality is that yes, there are uh, problems which are at the country level or which need to be addressed at the country level first, such as for example, the small farmer, uh, uh, sorry, the, uh, the small farmer uh, cluster model, which obviously needs to be designed and piloted at the country level. But in the same time, there are two things. One, there are problems which are uh, at a continental level. Uh, example, a topic brought up during our previous session, which is the issue of standards and food safety standards and harmonizing uh, standards across African countries 
recognizing as much as possible common regulations. And that is absolutely crucial when you link it to uh, the development of intra-African trade, which all countries are calling for, and which is the basis of the new uh, free trade zone uh, to which the majority of African countries have signed. And uh, so the, the two are there. So there's not, I, I see that it would be a big mistake to uh, validate one versus the other because they complement each other. And if the fund, the, 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 the people who design and write the programs for the funders do not understand that, then it's our responsibility to really identify who they are and engage discussions with them until they understand. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, this is an important comment that we, we always have these different uh, aspects which have to be addressed. Mary Doe, please. Mary, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank I you. see a facilitation of multi stakeholder partnership as uh, to be relevant in this uh, question. Uh, I mean, coordination of clusters that uh, whoever will be able to do this, we have uh, should have a skill for facilitation and uh, facilitation of uh, what is stakeholders we involve identification of the relevant stakeholders and the stakeholders the, the facilitator will be able to be in charge is not a manager and it's uh, not even a mentor is to facilitate is to guide is to provide information and is to look for the relevant uh, skills and abilities of uh, capa capa capacity of each group and be able to, if it is necessary, build up their knowledge of this. I acquired this skill through the uh, Wagenegge University. There was online uh, facilitation of multi-stakeholders in food systems. Uh, looking at sustainable for, for uh, fostering sustainable and inclusive food systems. So I that's our uh, the contribution I want to or information I want to provide at this level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. So so what you're actually saying is that here we have uh, you're actually promoting to have uh, facilitated dialogues. Uh, uh, addressing certain topics, right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much. So, so, so you're saying the platform, if the if the platform is addressing certain topics, research topics, or uh, uh, production lines or whatever, then uh, it is needed to have a facilitation of the dialogue here, and just to get the uh, uh, the actors involved in the discussion going. Thank you very much. Um, so who is the colleague with the action research? I'd like to hear about it. Well, I actually, I already intervened, but I can clarify a little bit more. Yes, if please. You, if you have time, yeah. Um, and um, actually I would uh, like to, I also wrote a question uh, in the chat which is about this, uh, you know, cluster perspective. So I, I didn't participate in the last, uh, well, the first session, so I don't know if you already have uh, explained that, but it would be useful to know what, uh, um, what does that mean? I mean, uh, is the cluster geographical? Is it thematic? Is it outcome-led uh, that's defined? So what's the definition of a cluster? And I think it's important to define that in order to see the different strategies for funding. So that before commenting on action research. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Stefan, would you like to have a go? That's your topic or Jackie? Uh, yes, this is indeed our topic and I want to respond to that. And good, uh, Leonie, thank you that you mentioned it here verbally. Um, indeed, this is part of our approach to define that. What do we mean with a cluster? Yes, this is also meant geographically. Uh, you might remember from the first Good Morning session, um, the figure that we showed with different geographical levels, uh, with different needs for uh, communication and cooperation uh, and coordination. So uh, yes, it has a geographical dimension, uh, this clustering approach, but of course it has also a thematic dimension, which means thematic clusters could be considered, but this has to be defined what is a thematic cluster and also clusters of interests, which could be manifold. And for example, the funders could be seen as a cluster uh, and on the national level, for example, if uh, different um, donor country approaches are uh, present there is the question on a national level, uh, does that not require a cluster of the, all those actors who are active in the field of food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture, and not only from the field of science. So the cluster approach is very much a question on how to organize, how to coordinate, and how to reflect this in a, in a platform infrastructure, uh, the clusters of interests uh, that do exist. And we are working on this um, in uh, uh, very soon on a, in a cluster concept. And you're warmly welcome um, to join this process, uh, which is possible uh, via the West Africa EU lines and the North Africa EU lines. So if you are interested to join this process of writing a cluster concept, uh, please contact us. Um, you can find our contact data on the website um, and also in, in, in the last slides and the first slides, you can address Jackie and me for that, for uh, designing this cluster concept that we want. Thank you. Back to you, Henning. Maybe Stefan, I could also pitch in and just add a clarification for Leonid is that we need the clusters to be developed organically because the value of it and the sustainability of it depends on the uh, in, in, in intrinsic value that the members of that cluster puts on it. Uh, so we are trying very hard, even at the design level, not to be prescriptive. And I think that's why Stefan is calling uh, to get calling upon you as interested parties to join in defining what would be an ideal cluster for your uh, situation, for your interests, for your expertise, and the list is endless. So just, we don't want to be prescriptive at this point in time, but we'd like to have clusters uh, formed organically. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, you know, both uh, you know, answers. Um, actually, I, I will join the group because uh, I, I work in INRA, I'm a researcher in, uh, in INRA in France in the eco development unit. And uh, we have a program uh, on, uh, on food and um, agriculture, of course, um, which is part of a big project, a European project, uh, Food Shift, about innovations in the food systems in uh, city regions of Europe, which I find you know, it will be very interesting to collaborate with the platform to give uh, precisely the, the European perspective you know, on, on these issues. And uh, uh, we are reflecting on you know, those issues about uh, clusters, networks, uh, value chain, just to frame you know, the, the different innovation processes. And uh, one of the things, you know, one of the reflections is about, you know, this more maybe academic discussion, but that it's quite useful uh, for uh, putting it in practice uh, about the, the local, the national, you know, the idea of the territory you know, as a place for intervention and uh, yeah. with a broader idea you know, of uh, networks, which in uh, when we discuss about 
you know, the food system in a multi-continental or multi-regional, sorry, uh, level becomes more, uh, I would say, uh, more within the value chain approach, which is precisely, you know, the, the linkages between different networks and it's more thematic uh, than uh, uh, geographical or territorial. And I think that's an, an important discussion that, uh, you know, I'll be happy to, to, to contribute and to learn from, uh, you know, other people in, in the platform, which goes, I would like to link this with uh, my, my contribution on action research. Because when we talk about action research, we want the researchers like uh, myself or like any of, uh, you know, uh, many of you who, who are in the platform, you know, to be part of the process of the, you know, social change that we want, you know, to produce um, by um, uh, research and innovation and in, uh, in input systems to go towards something more uh, sustainable. And uh, it is important in that sense that we go a further step on transdisciplinarity to really produce or co-produce a knowledge that comes from the bottom and it's a bottom that includes to everyone and that goes from you know the very first step of you know designing the project so when uh, we uh, discussed now about you know how to find you know which methods can be you know taken into account for uh, you know funding that uh, you know will, will be useful for uh, you know the the ends of uh, this platform then uh, the, the way how we define uh, research projects it usually in practice you know even if in 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 theory it says well it has to be participatory it has to produce an impact you know the gap between uh, research and policy you know it has to be filled in and it has to be clear blah 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 blah, blah. It's, a, it's a beautiful discourse but to which we all of us we believe in. Uh, however, in, in the practice, you know, as someone was saying, either because of bureaucracy, either because of the scheme, uh, the different uh, um, schemes that, uh, you know, funders, donors, uh, uh, governments have, uh, at the end, you know, unfortunately, many things stay in, uh, in the discourse. And in the practice is basically defined by, you know, researchers with uh, some participation from uh, uh, other stakeholders and in the process of you know getting the outputs and uh, usually outputs more than uh, uh, outcomes you know it, it also goes to uh, participatory processes in the best of the cases and very very little in terms of action research especially when you know projects want to scale up and to you know go uh, beyond you know the, the very local level or the uh, case study level. So I think that's where we, we need to, I would like to see you know, um, as an outcome of a, of a platform like, uh, you know, this one. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So, but you also, you were also uh, the lady that addressed this, that uh, the projects have their own reality, right? Um, I think, the, or the, let's say, uh, is, you said it's never neutral. Ah, oh, yes, I did, yeah. Be yeah. Be because uh, for me, it's very interesting. I, I had a discussion with, uh, I forgot, if, I think with Philippe Barre, I think he's from your university, right? Uh, uh, no, INRES Research Institute is the, a national, you know, French National Research Institute on Agriculture, Food and Environment. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, effectively, I, I said that research is not neutral. And the, I think that's also important because we have to, you know, locate all you know, the innovation processes, you know, either if it's technological or social innovation, you know, the different types of innovation. They want to produce social change and social change is never going to be neutral. And we have to address, you know, the, the policy side and not only policy, the institutional side of what, you know, change in the food system means. 
And of course, when we discuss, you know, between innovations, of, you know, how to do agroecology in the south and in the north, you know, there are going to be tensions. And so how do we produce the, the type of research that's useful you know, to cover the different scales of these innovations and uh, the, the, the impacts that the, the, at the end they will have to be uh, uh, linked to policy and to food strategies. And uh, in that sense, you know, research is not going to be neutral. And when we talk about actual research, that also implies that we, I mean, the researchers, in my case, you know, we may need you know, to take at some point a position. So how do we deal with that? And when it comes to donors, you know, in my experience in the past, not in Inra, but in a, another institution where I was, and we were discussing about this. And uh, yes, it came, uh, just to give the example, it was, uh, we were discussing about, you know, the trade agreement between the European Union and Indian countries. And when it came to, you know, discuss the effect on uh, access to resources, water, land, and food security, you know, against extractive industries, then suddenly, you know, the discourse changed. Mm. So I guess that's why we really need to place, you know, everything that has to do with food and security in the larger context that has to do with, for example, access to resources, you know, biodiversity and so on, with the many issues that uh, have been covered by, you know, the uh, research by the many institutes that are part of this platform. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I see here, I don't want to stop the discussion, but I just had George here lifting his hands. George, are you still there or do you? Oh yes, your hand is still there. George, please comment. Yeah, thank you very much. I lowered it, but it's up again. And um, <laughs> there is a point about um, the cluster concept that I thought I should uh, bring out as we discuss what definition we would um, adduce to the cluster that we want to build. And it has to do with the fact that the cluster concept hinges on one pillar, that pillar of the triple helix approach to cluster development. And by triple helix, we are looking at the case where there'll be the national government involvement, then there'll be the academia, and then there'll be the economic actors, the firms. And I thought that this is important because um, this is at the base of the sustainability of clusters. In the cluster projects that we did in, in Stepri, it is one of the things that we found out that if clusters would succeed or fail, it all has to do with how the roles in these triple helix are played out. If governments, as for example, their ministries and their agencies commit to the principles of cluster development, then to a large extent, there'll be contribution to success. Academia is supposed to generate the knowledge base for cluster activity. The knowledge base coming through research and innovation and contribute to the innovations that we want to see in the economic um, actors domain if these are successfully, these roles are successfully played out, we are sure to achieve sustainability for the clusters. And then the economic actors themselves, the small and medium enterprises, the firms that are operating within the cluster, if indeed they play out their roles and they are able to um, absorb the 
innovations that are coming out from academia and apply it within their settings, then you can be well assured that there will be an achievement of sustainability. So I just thought that should bring out the link between or the linkage between the triple helix uh, pillar of the clusters and the sustainability that, of course, we all have to aim at to achieve. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. Um, we had this point already that some of you, someone from you said, uh, we have to provide these services that that fill the, the gaps of, of the activities in the network. And I want to, to maybe ask one question with regards to this topic here also, Leonid says, because uh, if you're addressing social change, you're addressing transformation, you're addressing scaling up, and you have the normal call for proposals, how do you break this up? For I give you an example, and this example was given actually to, to me, and that's why I asked for this, uh, by Philippe Barré, also from Louvain University. He says, you have, for example, a person working in physiology going to, uh, to talk to a farmer and to, in look of a project, in, research, in, a, in search of a project. And he meets the farmer and he finds out that the the, the farmer doesn't really have a, a, a plant physiology problem, but he has a soil problem and a climate problem and an organization problem. So, so how, you, how do we catch up this problem? How do you uh, bring actors to the ground who have a, who launch a sound analysis to uh, develop a theory, how to address this social change, how to provide tools for scaling up. How do you do that in the frame of a call? Are there any ideas? Because this is one of the problems we have in, 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 in research funding. And what we actually started to do in, for example, in BLE in Germany, we where we started with pre-projects where these topics can be organized, maybe other partners can be integrated. Please, your comments. Could I make myself clear what my question was? So my question is, do you think the platform shall facilitate um, activities to or to uh, to provide input to to set up a program for uh, how to organize transformation, how to organize scaling up, how to involve the uh, relevant actors into research. Uh, Leonid, please. Yeah. Well, quick quick reaction. I I think it should because it's the kind of, uh, you know, seeds funding that's very useful. That uh, in research, we call it, uh, you know, also funding uh, proof of concepts and, and that kind of things. So it will basically, you know, be to provide uh, um, not only the, the reflections of our research, but also the, the tools that uh, have been used, you know, to, to make easy or easier the project formulation and uh, yeah, finding for more um, the implementation of uh, research projects and so on. It would be very useful. Thank you very much. Jackie, you're lifting your hand, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just needed also to contribute to your question. I think for yes, me, at the point of developing the call is to realize that at the end, for the research to be valuable and useful, then it needs to take a transdisciplinary approach, which means that the recognition that there might be indigenous knowledge that the academia might not have should be recognized at the point of making that call. But second is to develop an appreciation for citizen science and local knowledge. Because sometimes when you design these calls in the boardroom and then try and 
replicate them in the laboratory, they might not be useful uh, as uh, uh, instruments that can be used out of the lab or outside the boardroom. So just an appreciation of uh, an inclusivity of transdisciplinary, transdisciplinarity at the point of designing the call, and also encouraging the participation of local actors and uh, indigenous knowledge, local knowledge, and, and as well as citizen uh, science, uh, I think would be helpful uh, to make the, either the cluster and the platform more relevant to the stakeholders stakeholders that it wants to serve and to the end users. So that would be my opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saki. Krishan, please. It's very interesting conversations we're having. Um, I, I have been looking at trying to link up these concepts of innovation platforms at different levels. You know, we, as um, Jackie just mentioned, we are talking about recognizing the indigenous knowledge. So, and then you find that donors are saying, oh, we are contributing to SDGs. And you find that there's such a big distance between achieving SDGs and recognizing this local knowledge that we cannot have a research program or project that will satisfy or be able to connect all these in one go. So either we have to go vertically, but very thin, or we have to recognize that we have to do the work in different stages. And I've been, I've been struggling with this concept of how to link up all the efforts we're doing about you know, multi-stakeholder partnerships, innovation platforms at local level, bringing them from you know, community level, maybe linking them to a value chain level, and then eventually linking them to a national level. And then you have the other uh, discussions that are emerging at the moment is all about, you know, climate change, agroecology, you know, the green deals and so on, which are very much about large scale transformations. We talk of transformations, we talk of transitions, and these concepts are, are at different scales, really. And, and I'm trying to find what is the link between these two? How can we explain to someone that the, the research and innovation work we're doing within the context of an innovation platform is contributing to those bigger innovation niche that they refer to in this transition phases. And I'm, I'm, and, and I'm trying, and I'm, one of the ideas I'm having is that we, we need to get people to understand or define the scope of intervention at at least three levels of hierarchy in organization. So if you're talking about working with the local actors at, let's say, the, the, the farm, farming community, um, you probably cannot have a program that goes beyond that to maybe up to a national level. So that you, you define how your project is actually implementing and, is, and you're, you're, you, you provide the, the, the hooks for someone else to come in and latch on to your work and say, okay, well, what you're doing here is what I can now bring into the level of, you know, policymakers into regional policy and again into continental even SDGs. Obviously, if you're able to connect your, your program to something that is already connected to an SDG, you can then say, well, by doing this, I'm contributing to a, a bigger program's objective of achieving the SDGs. Um, otherwise, you, know, you will find the donors are still looking for impact stories. So they'll say, yes, we are, we are funding at a transnational level, but the stories you want is the, of the farmer who's you know, very happy you know, with a nice picture and so on, and that's the impact story. And we forget about what is the role of the, all the intermediaries in between. And I think that's where our platform is really about getting the, the people to recognize these, the roles of these intermediaries in linking these farmers, these impacts at different levels. So, yeah, perhaps one of the one of the one of the options is to say, okay, well, can we look at cascading these programs or, or we, our research programs so that even in the design, we're saying, well, we're going to look at uh, supporting programs at different levels. So for a for a continental or, or transnational level, we are looking at these kinds of aspects, and then we're going to also look at other clusters that are complementary 
at national level, which are more focused to the national objectives or the, the, the national agenda, but which are still related to that regional one. So yeah, it's, it's really about the, you know, we talk about the year of the tiger, the Chinese Zodiac says, year of the tiger is about the year of changes. And maybe we, it's time we look at changing the way we think about things and breaking it up into components that can then be reassembled in different ways. Uh, but it requires a lot of collective thinking, uh, which I think this platform is, is also about uh, to provide us with. Thanks. Last Thank five you, minutes, please, Henning, of the session. Thank you. Leonid, you still have a comment? Your hand is still up. No, sorry, I, I just forgot to lower the hand. Anybody else? Nobody. Okay. So is this the year of the tiger? Who, who was it? Mary. Mary. Mary? Yes, please, Mary. Okay, okay, thank you. Quick addition. Um, I'm just thinking that after the selection of um, the proposals, there could be the need to uh, train the researchers, there are certain micro skill, uh, skill, the micro skills that uh, could be necessary in communicating and in really making the actors to re to, to to be able to uh, participate freely and also uh, come up with the innovation, the ideas that we are looking for. So that's the, the micro skills are there. And from, from my experience, many researchers don't have it. So after the selection, there could be the need for the organization to come together, to call the researchers together and also train them on the Okay. I cannot hear you anymore. I can hear you, Henning. I cannot hear Mary anymore. Mm -hmm. No, she stopped indeed. I also cannot hear Mary. Okay. So I think we're coming to an end here. So Christian, is it the year of the tiger? That's right. It's the year of the tiger that, that's meant to bring a, about drastic changes in the way we do things. <laughs> so. This is incredible. So I think that we should great. go for this. Henning, do we have Mentimeter 19? Uh, did you finish that one? Bravo, Christian. <laughs> I think I finished it, right? I'm not sure. I have to see. How is it with Mentimeter 5? I'll just sh stop sharing my screen. Thank you very much. So I'm not sure. Uh, question 19. Did, are we through with that? Are you through with that, Henny? Yes. I okay. think I'm through. Thank you very much, everybody. I was happy because, of course, I was not really sure how to, to mobilize 77 people to contribute to the discussion. And we are learning in these pandemic times, but I think it went very well. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Henning. And Siam, please allow me to share the screen and then back to you, uh, Jackie, for the next uh, speaker, please. Okay. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you, Henning. For... Hello, hello. Can we have access to the PowerPoint presentations? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, uh, CM will provide us with a link, and I think uh, you will get you'll get those links uh, as at the end of this meeting. Thank you very much. Allow me to introduce our next session. Uh, just appreciating Henning for the. Uh, discussion that we've just had. Thank you for at least collecting and documenting the inputs as they came along. And thank you participants for also participating and contributing to that discussion. Uh, our next session looks at the actual uh, 
um, platform, AU EU platform that we intend to develop. And I think I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Irene Anor Frempong, uh, who is the, uh, based at FARA, and uh, FARA in full would be Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa. And we have the pleasure and the honor of inviting her to uh, speak right now because FARA is actually the coordination for our LEAP for FNSS project. So, Irene. Uh, you have the floor. We have 15 minutes for you uh, to highlight uh, what the IRC project is about and also uh, the platform, the AU, EU platform for research and innovation for FNSS. You can share your screen. Okay. Yes, yeah, I think I, I should share my screen. Um, There's a second, the screen was opened. Hmm. I thought it was even already shared. Let's see what's going on. But hello, everybody. Good, good, um, good day. It's exciting times, and I am extremely excited to be part of this conversation. Um, I've I've listened and I've learned and I've, I've been excited about comments and inputs. Um, I think that we are on the right track. So what what I intend to do. I don't know what's happening. Why am I? My, I've opened it. Now, guys, talk me through here. You're muted, Stefan. Stefan, we can see you talking. Yeah, yeah, like always, the best speech is on the I've opened it and then I go back to my screen share, but I can't find it in my. Yeah, what because there, there opens a window and you might want to scroll down and then you find it. If you have different windows open, it's not uh, that comfortable in, in oh, Zoom. Yeah. Let's close the windows, windows so that it makes life easier. Alternatively, you could also send it via email to me and then uh, yeah. I can show it. Yeah, but I like to control my slides. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so let me go again. Um, full screen, try it again, share screen. There you go, got it. Yeah, there's something coming up. Okay, it's there and then choose please the presentation mode and then... Uh... Are you seeing it? Yes, perfect. Okay, the next thing is to check whether if I move, you will see uh -huh. it's moving. We are you see slide the next one. slide? Now slide two. Thank you. Great. Okay, Excellent. Super, super. So fantastic morning and uh, great ideas uh, around um, the, the big, big issues for around the coordination around and I was excited when Prudence was, was explaining and all the issues that um, they, they brought out that made what I will say very easy and, and, and straightforward. So I think everything is set up because even day, day one, we touched on issues of stakeholder typologies and these all fit into what I will try to say before we open for discussion uh, through the Mentimeter. Um, I will basically try to situate what we're doing, what we, we have started doing in the good morning meetings uh, through to the end, try to situate it within the overarching uh, process in building the platform. And then maybe touch on a few elements that I think the International Research Consortium um, purports to do. So I would like to really um, 
start by reminding us, and I think we, we know these things, but reminding us uh, that the Leap for FNSSA uh, project um, is a, a coordination a support action supported under the Horizon 2020. And the main mandate for that project was to establish or to enable or catalyze a transformation um, of the FNSSA partnership into a bicontinental platform. And it anticipates that this will be done by establishing a sustainable platform uh, so that we can ensure efficient and coherent implementation of the AU-EU research and innovation partnership as we find described in the Food, Nutrition, Security and Sustainable Agriculture Roadmap, FNSSA. So my, my first thing that I want to get clear across is the platform. Platform is, I mean, we're using it everywhere and everybody talks about platform. But generally for the context of our discussion, the platform basically is the basic infrastructure that we want to put in place upon which AUEU FNSSA research and innovation programs that have been prioritized um, in line with the bicontinental FNSSA themes can be implemented by all vested uh, stakeholders in a coherent and efficient manner. And to do so is to address the targets we've set for ourselves and the goals. So a platform meaning in our context is similar to any platform meaning or general platform meaning. And I think it's important to also highlight then that the, the form of this infrastructure that I talk about is then determined by the identified functions expected to combine to help us deliver this coherence and efficiency we're talking about and to ensure a long -term on a long-term sustainable basis. Because we know the problems of incoherence, the problems of duplication, I think I've had it come through in the discussion, inefficiency, you know, um, and these are the things that have bedeviled, you know, most uh, projects for the past uh, decades, you know. So I think this is something that is at the heart of this platform and the essence of setting up this platform. So I, this slide is crowded and I don't mind it being crowded because I didn't want to use also the, the animations. I didn't know what Zoom will allow, but also I left it crowded like this to make a point that you know, for the past decade or so, this process started. You know, the, the cooperation between Africa and Europe started long ago. And we, we saw um, issues that, you know, about incoherence and duplication and all that. So the quest to have something that builds uh, better coherence and, and helps us to prioritize better has always been there, started long ago. And it was accentuated, of course, uh, through the policy engagement between the AU and the EU. And so there we will see a number of strategies and policies are pertinent to why we need to form a, a platform. And even before that, we had projects going on at different levels, um, but the policy dialogue led to prioritizing the FNSSA as an initial roadmap to try and, and move this agenda of having coherence around implementation of programs. And so with the advent of the FNSSA, the new projects that were put together included one, which I call a coordination support action, one that we are talking about today, the Leave for FNSSA. So since the past four years, you know, that the, the project or three years that the project started, um, the project has put itself into different work packages, trying to ensure that we put the, the basic elements that are relevant uh, towards identifying or putting forward this EU, EU platform. And permit me to mention that 
at this point, as we speak, there are a number of success factors that we already see that are emerging or that have emerged from the different web packages that were put together under the project. Um, we see that um, we have established uh, a strong channel between uh, the partnership in the Live for FNSSA um, project itself and the policy instruments. And uh, sorry to come back, but the Live for FNSSA is a partnership across uh, Africa and Europe, uh, working with 35 uh, countries, research and, institution, uh, research and innovation institutions across these 35 countries or so. 20 in Europe, 15 in Africa. So in a way, the Live for FNSSA itself is a, a platform or a, a, a partnership that is going to help us uh, learn a lot towards uh, this platform. So a key success factor that this project has put forward is establishing that channel of always engaging with the policy processes, the HLPD, the, the uh, bureau, the, the senior officials meeting summits. So that engagement is there. It's also uh, important to highlight that, that we have for the FNSSA partnership is bigger than just the leaf for FNSSA. But we've tried also to uh, define a, an m and &E framework for the partnership and um, also ensure that we have uh, key um, elements that you know, are relevant for engaging with the policy processes. Again, um, I can highlight that we have worked very hard to engage a number of uh, stakeholders because we know the platform should involve stakeholders. And I've highlighted these stakeholders in red just to remind us that it includes a lot of uh, categories of stakeholders as pertained in the discussion of the one presented by Agana, different uh, decision makers, funding institutions, international organizations, farmers organizations, industry, agribusiness. And we try to highlight the, the involvement of women and youth entrepreneurs, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I underscore this because this should be, um, and I'm, that's why I'm excited about the process going on, that it has taken this in, into perspective. Uh, we also have, as a success factor, we have a process for involving stakeholders to showcase us their stories. And we have a credible knowledge sharing um, facility that is touted you know, as one of the, the top uh, platforms uh, sharing knowledge on trending topics when it comes to FNSSA. Another um, success factor comes from a piece of work from our, one of the web packages, which is three, uh, that we, we've been able to put uh, in place uh, an outreach and information channel to all stakeholders, as mentioned about. We have a credible uh, database and um, over 300 uh, projects are already in the database. You can access them through our website. And we have credible knowledge management tools in place, uh, obviously advanced and strengthened uh, knowledge base. And by the way, um, I forgot to mention that under the, um, um, in our website, that's run under one of the work package and that's the work package that's supporting uh, this program. We so far have over 120 plus um, interest, expressions of interest that have come through um, requesting to be part of the platform. And, and again, the key import of why we're doing this Good Morning meeting centers around this quadrant here in the corner, where I think is providing huge, huge uh, information into how the, the platform uh, should be formed in terms of the cyclical, uh, cyclic, long-term cyclic programming process. We know that the PIMC model has been working hard to help uh, deduce a number of elements uh, that should inform the, the, the nature of the platform because 
the platform should, is not an empty play. It has to have content. And we, we think that that is a, a good way to um, get for each, each programming cycle to have the involvement of all stakeholders that will go uh, in those cycles to ensure continuity and longevity, the long-termness uh, is assured in that, in that process. And I think you've already talked about it in, in the previous uh, meetings. But again, uh, important to mention that we, we are building a community, uh, a community of building uh, processes through our West Africa EU alliances and North Africa EU alliances. You heard from Dora this morning talking about the NIA, particularly on private sector. That is a, a huge input that should inform uh, the form of the platform that we intend to, to build. And of course, um, a good dose of information was provided today uh, on the TCIPs, the theory of change and impact pathways, knowledge management, communication concepts, coordination hub, and of course, uh, also the cluster network process. And all these are the critical elements that we are looking out for to inform us uh, in shaping uh, the EU, EU platform. But last but not the least, the centrality of this, we need to pull all these threads together and, and forge ahead uh, to move to to start to a starting point where we can say that the AU EU platform uh, has actually started. And therefore, we also formulated and provided principles around um, the International Research Consortium as a plausible uh, format for initiating such uh, a platform. And you go on the website, you see a lot of information around the principles. Um, again, we, we also have pulled together um, TCIPs for the project itself, but more importantly, moving towards getting a common vision because everything about having an efficient and coherent platform or system is to have a common vision, singularity of purpose. And that needs to be pulled uh, together. And we think the TCIPs that uh, you're talking about uh, will help uh, move that agenda forward. We also have um, a roadmap now uh, that we are going to see through to implement uh, from now in the last eight months to get us to initiating this platform. Of course, working hard on visibility and of course, ethic requirements. You see, I've highlighted governance here because it's one thing that I probably will leave uh, on this, um, for this discussion. And the governance element, I think we already mentioned the coordination hub. It's a, it's a very important uh, element to be discussed and agreed upon because at the end of the day, the platform is about, about efficient coordination to ensure we are coherent in what we do. It doesn't mean that we're talking that we're going to have a gigant one, one platform. And I, I think that's where the, the discussions we are having in the good morning meetings actually fit. Where, where would important clusters be formed and how would they um, dovetail into the platform that's coordinating all these efforts? We envisage the platform to have uh, to play certain functions and therefore have a, a number of elements. And one element of course uh, is to have uh, an element that links what we are doing to the policy process, that's key. Uh, including of course the m and &E. Another element is, sorry? Are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you, but it seems that somebody, uh, okay. something interferes. I, I don't know. Please go ahead, Ari. So a second Should element I... that is important and functionally um, credible for any platform is the issue of stakeholder alliances. And the aim there, of course, is to continue to form sustainable stakeholder groups, identify regional priorities, 
and emerging issues related to FNSSN. Now, Christian's point, I was listening to, to, to him and probably at the end, I'll try to forge, forge an answer to Christian. It's all about, you know, how you, the connect, the interconnectedness is what we are seeking. It, so the alliances and the groups and the stakeholders are pertinent. This process that we've initiated in, in the, in, in the um, actually not before, we've initiated it and we are now highlighting it in these Good Morning meetings. This process is to ensure that we have these alliances being formed in a sustainable manner. But the issue now is the interconnectedness of these to the, the, the coordination of the platform. Another element, of course, that's critical to any platform is uh, the functionality of its information and communication system. And, and so we, we're aiming at having an element that generates uh, and disseminates updated information on projects and programs and outcomes impacts and I've already told you that we have that success factor already emerging from the Leap for FNSSA project. And then of course, um, all these things need to be funded and therefore the alliances we talk about must also come around funding um, um, and policy makers and their priorities also can shape the research agenda and what we do within the, the partnership. So again, that's another element that was discussed today. Very, very interesting, thanks to Henning and, uh, uh, and Prudence. And I think these are the key elements that are emerging in the Envisage platform. But last but not the least, the, this platform can be sustainable if we have a continuous lesson learning and capacity building element that paths the entire uh, platform that provides continuous uh, feedback and, and inclusion of new ideas into the platform. So I like the point that Prudence made about flexibility. The platform is not supposed to be rigid, it's supposed to be robust and is supposed to um, be flexible and allow us to plow in new ideas, new lessons that are compelling uh, to uh, ensure sustainability. So I have touched on the fact that we have put forward or formulated an international research consortium to kickstart this process as the initial form of this platform. And the IRC, again, information on our website will tell you it's expected to be a group of institutions, including research and innovation institutions, public and private institutions, who agree to work jointly or in alignment within the mid to long term. And it has to be a formal, formal agreement, maybe MOU or um, um, or something like that. So when you go to our website and you express interest, you will see the modalities that it is a formal expression of interest that the institutions need to uh, make. Of course, we also know that um, stakeholders will be interested to join um, if they are aware of the benefits. So again, we've articulated some of the benefits in the documentation on the IRC. Of course, it will increase the impact of your initiative if you are part of it. Um, it will also help optimize the utilization of your work, your results, your outputs will provide access uh, to a knowledge base that you would not ordinarily have if you are working outside the, the platform. And of course, give you the learning environment. I talked about the, the learning uh, bit of the platform. Uh, and then, of course, important to most of us is the opportunity to access uh, funding programs and other opportunities, gain recognition and visibility of whatever we do at, at research and uh, level, because I, I was happy with one of the contributions uh, that said, you know, we, we do research, but we don't turn it around for people to see what we are doing or to know about it or, or to, to, 
to sell ourselves. Somebody, and I think Dora made that point. We, we don't sell ourselves. But how do you sell yourself without uh, visibility and recognition within your national agenda and within your national um, processes for them to know the contribution of, of research in the national uh, discourse? So that is important. And last but not the least, to participate in the governance of the platform. And for me, that is the number one uh, benefit because then you, you're part and parcel of defining uh, the form of how this platform is going to be shaped or formed. And that's why these stakeholder meetings, these good morning meetings from uh, theory to practice for me is important to engage as many uh, people uh, as possible to uh, be part of um, structuring or, or forming uh, the platform. Now, I'm bringing this back just as a reminder, not necessarily to discuss it because I know it's already been discussed, but um, it's all about having an effective coordination of such a platform and stakeholders um, in the IRC. One of the points that were, were put out there is that stakeholders will be engaged from the design stage. So it is not a platform that is going to be formed at the end and then stakeholders will come and, and then participate. It is supposed to be the stakeholders beginning to define it along the, just like uh, these processes that have been beautifully engaged. So again, this is something that I think has been deduced from our PM, PIMC and it's something that is a plausible uh, hub that needs to be discussed, further discussed, synthesized, diagnosed, so that we will come up with something that, as Prudence said, we are looking for something we want, something that will work for both Africa and, and Europe. So towards next steps um, for this uh, milestone, as I've been given to talk about, we know and we've engaged the TCIP process. Uh, we know that that is a process that leads to deriving a common vision. That's the whole, for me, that's the centrality of the TCIPs, the common vision and defining the pathways that are necessary for arriving there. So we're trying to complete that for the project and help us to mobilize more stakeholders, but this is only going to be a precursor to deriving the overarching AU, EU platform TCIP. That I think the elements that we have already talked about, the, the draft TCIPs that you're talking about will, will feed into it and also other elements that have already been engaged at least from the Africa side through the Malabo process. And of course, from the EU side will all feed into this overarching uh, theory of change and impact pathway then we are assured of some pathway to obtain commonality of purpose for this platform. Secondly, as I mentioned, the, the task force has been put in place to give us very clear action plan between now and uh, August, or so October. In the next eight months, we are going to focus on these steps to ensure that we will deliver a product that initiates the AU EU platform. And for now, in the form of the International Research Consortium. Another next step is to enhance or increase the mobilization of partners uh, through different platforms. Different work packages are engaging stakeholders. And this event, for me, is uh, very useful in, in this regard. We will attempt to try and complete our leave for FNSSA uh, work plan under our grant agreement, because whether you call it uh, coordination support action or not, it's a project and we need to complete it uh, as per the grant agreement. And then of course, hopefully we would have the key elements that will help us in the final right shop uh, in August to launch uh, the AUEU platform in the form of the International Research Consortium and of course, final documentation. So by way of next steps, these are some of the things we have then you will see for each next step, what we are discussing, the TCIPs are important means we need to move them uh, to deliver and conclude. 
uh, the roadmap, there are elements that we need to deliver. This, these stakeholder engagement are critical uh, to, to, to us in, in the project. And of course, to us in delivering the mandate that was given to Leap for FNSSA as delivering the bicontinental EU, EU platform uh, for research and innovation uh, um, in, in, in the two continents. So uh, colleagues, let me stop here and uh, maybe invite uh, uh, Sam to help me with the Mentimeter questions and then we hopefully have time to have open discussions, uh, questions, and see how um, we, we really work around ensuring that we have uh, this platform in place. Thank you very much. So if I can go first to the, uh, the, the first question, there are two main questions in this session. The first one is what has been left out. I've tried to situate uh, what we've been doing in, in the process from 10, 20 years ago to date. Uh, but what has been left out for of establishing an alliance for the next milestone, which is building uh, this platform? Let us know your thoughts. What, what, what do you think we've left out? Uh, because we need your ideas to ensure that, you know, um, we have all the key elements uh, to, to establish uh, an alliance that will move this platform. Okay. The so CM team, please upload uh, the link to the Mentimeter in the chat, please. Thank you. So every idea is important. Um, let's put it out there, we can discuss and uh, I'm sure that it will add on to what we're trying to do. Well, Irene, you can see already, at least we have one response. Uh, someone says linkages with recently announced EU African knowledge base mm -hmm. by the EU GRC. And I think that response comes from Ivan Kulis. Okay. That's one suggestion. Okay, that's good. The EU GRC, well, I think also still forms part of the uh, European Commission and they are also linked uh, to the high level policy dialogue process. But we need to figure out how GRC itself, because that's the, the research um, group, uh, how, how. Yeah. And then there's an issue on complication uh, when you are running continent wide initiatives. I think the practicality mm -hmm. of uh, coordinating it, uh, yeah. Yeah. one of our participants is highlighting would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Wh whom charge with public policies? I think whom do we charge with the public policies um, and access and enhance access to information is another one. Yeah. We do step by step. I think we'll move too quickly. Yeah. I think there's also, uh, go ahead, Jackie. Yeah, there's also an approach to youth involvement in agricultural business. I think a lot of agribusiness. Mm -hmm. And uh, please remember, uh, dear participants, that we are trying to figure out in what Irene has explained, and I think in what we've discussed during the day, what do you think we've missed out? Because that would help enrich uh, the milestone that we want in building the platform. Mm -hmm. So it's not just articulating what your desires would be, it is trying to point out that we forgot something. So that would be helpful. 
Yes. Um, I think there's also a narration, uh, a reiteration of the fact that there's a complexity of implementing multi-stakeholder initiatives. I think I, I feel from the few respondents uh, that we've had, there's a reservation of how complex and how big uh, um, regional initiatives are, and especially when we're looking at bi-regional. Mm -hmm. uh, managing power dynamics and enhancing equality, diversity, and inclusion within the program. Uh, I think, yeah, Irene, maybe the point there is we need to be keen on that because sometimes it's overlooked. And, and I think just to add, sometimes power dynamics come when um, one partner has funding and the other has expertise. So how do you manage the power dynamics so, uh, in that scenario? Yeah, and indeed that, that uh, speaks to what, what, how do you set up your, your platform or your coordination in such a way that it will deal with uh, the, this kind of dynamic? You know, yeah. and the, the complexity issue is is very important because uh, we need to begin to see why we are engaging in this process and the, why the alliances are important. That you are not looking at this huge giant one uh, platform that is uh, unwieldy, but you are actually having a system of connecting. You know, to, to the relevant relevant alliances to be better. Again, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I still need some more participation because I am sure we've missed a lot. And mm. your pointers help us refine what our, our, our milestone building would look like. I think I read something came up that I thought was very interesting. Uh, one of the participants says the source of funding might might be an issue. Uh, I don't know how to elaborate that, but sometimes I think it boils down to the power dynamic. Of exactly. Funding, yeah. Jackie, you know, uh, the reality on the ground is that we're always having the funding coming from the European side. And uh, how do we ensure that that does not uh, cloud the, 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 the direction of what we do? And more importantly, how do we ensure that the African uh, stakeholders uh, also contribute their quota so that they, they, there's a balance, you know, at the table when it comes to um, deriving the, the common agendas, you know, and implementing the common agendas. And I can tell you that if I look at the background work in terms of the work that's been done in Africa, we've done so much, but then funding to implement these strategies and frameworks you know, it then makes it appear as if, you know, nothing is going on. So mm. yes, the funding issue is, is and, and that, that is something we need to figure out how to resolve in, in such a platform. Yeah, and then I think always is to look for genuine partnership where you have mutual interests and that would really have value in uh, having alliances that have value addition. Mm -hmm. I wanted to highlight. Somebody um, is even suggesting something, Jackie. Instead of IRC, why not AU EU Research and Coordination Infrastructure Consortium? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a suggestion. That's all of them. That is the, the, the good thing is involving people. People are thinking through what 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 is going on, and yeah. and also sharing thoughts. And and that's I think is the beauty of yeah. the, the process that we, we are trying to engage in. Yeah. Uh, then somebody else is saying, how will you manage uh, reporting efficiently when different funders will have different requirements? Mm -hmm. um, I think you're thinking on that, Irene, because ideally, if you have a coordination hub, then mm -hmm. uh, the management of reporting and um, meeting funding requirements would be coordinated, don't you think so? Exactly, so that's that's the whole point, isn't it? That we have to have a, a coordination mechanism that rises above this issue where, where the funding and, and the expectations of the different funders, and, and which is real because every funder will have their own expectations, their own strategies, 
but how do we um, ensure that the common interests, because this is a, a platform seeking common interests. It does not stop individual funders seeking their own strategies and, you know, and it does not stop other um, bilateral cooperation. No, it, it will go on. But what we're saying is this, that when it comes to the AU and EU common interests around FNSSA, the coordination must be such that uh, we're able to um, pull the, the, irrespective of the differences in the, in the interests of the, of the funders or the, the stakeholders, we're able to pull the common ones that are beneficial to, to both continents. Mm -hmm. So maybe just a few more. Um, I know we are 66, we've really dwindled from when we started. So maybe just a few more comments as well from you. Uh, we'd really like to hear what you think we've missed out or left out or something we should focus or try and uh, place a little more scrutiny when uh, developing the platform. Uh, I think I have a few comments highlighted now to define the long-term character of the platform infrastructure versus short-term project support. Um, yeah, I, I think the point we want to make is that uh, platform need to be longer term, uh, not short term, mm -hmm. because the, even the impact pathways that we need mm -hmm. to look at for mm -hmm. the changes we are proposing mm -hmm. with the uh, platform has to be seen in a longer horizon time time mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and indeed, Jackie, you will see uh, when I drew the arrow, the arrow goes even beyond. Once you even set up the platform, the process should continue. Yeah. Um, because that's what is going to assure the longevity. And no matter how long term you, you engage a process, recall that this process didn't start today. It started decade, a decade or so ago, yeah. and we continue, and it will continue, or it should, actually, that's the expectation. Yeah. It should continue even when you initiate uh, the platform. So that, and, and that's where the robustness and the flexibility of whatever platform you put in place is important because you need to take feedback from an ongoing process into uh, the, the, the runnings of this platform to make it respond to, to new ideas and, and new emerging issues, you see. So for me, it's important, and this question is relevant, that, that we need to say that the, the platform is a long-term platform and therefore it engenders um, long-term processes. Um, however, you, you cannot continue a process without uh, starting it, without having a product. And that's why we are saying that come uh, October, we're gonna initiate that by launching the IRC, which attempts to uh, pull the relevant stakeholders uh, together and the process should continue. And, and, and we must be flexible to take on board you know, the linkages, the connectedness, and all those things that are relevant to ensuring a long-term sustainable process in, 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 in this platform. So very, very good point made there. Okay, so I think we are at 31. I, I think we'll just have a few more minutes just here, just to get any last minute comment you may have. We don't want to lock anybody out because your views are extremely important into what we want to create because the ownership stems by you being part of yeah. uh, the process of, of uh, building that platform. But That's I think something else uh, in our discussion, I mean, when you made the presentation that uh, there is an expression of interest. And I think the idea is we'd like as many uh, institutions to sign up. But then I'm just wondering, uh, institutions versus individuals, researchers mm -hmm. versus research institutions, what would be your take in terms of the uh, members of the uh, consortium that would form the platform? Well, you see, th this is, let, let me take it this way. The, the engagement in the platform or the, the consortium, we said it has to have some formality. So, mm -hmm around it. So that means that it has to have some, some backing, institutional backing. Mm -hmm. So you express interest and there must be some formal 
element, at least an MOU type of thing to know your willingness and the underscore willingness uh, to, to join hands really uh, to be part of a platform. So that's one point. But having said that, it's, it's not the platform, the, the coordination or the platform alone that matters. It is how we also have other um, alliances and groups that will be formed of individuals. So you are not cutting individuals out. It's just that, I mean, as we talked about private sector, we talked about uh, including the youth and all that. There must be uh, another, and that's why the clustering process that you talk about is important, that you have different clusters of interest and, and clusters, I think Stefan is a better place to talk about that, but these then need to be connected. Mm -hmm. I think my operate, operate, operating word is the interconnectedness between the relevant uh, groups for research and innovation, how they are properly connected to uh, the platform uh, in terms of all the institutional um, or the institutions that have signed up uh, to, to join hands to shape this platform and to participate in the different elements uh, of the platform. So that, that's how I will, yeah. Thank you very much for that clarification. I think we wrap up this session, but just conclude by this statement, the person who says, hold on, <laughs> hold on, Sia. Uh, I think they were ref referring to ensuring we use outputs from the AU and EU processes. And I think that uh, threads very well to the relevance of the platform because it should uh, support also existing processes. I mean. Okay. Okay. That's fair enough. Okay. So our next Mentimeter question goes to, would you join the development process of the platform? And you have three options. It's either yes, or perhaps, or a no. Uh, and this we would like for everyone on the chat to participate. At least mm -hmm. let's get about 60. We would like to know if our day today and uh, Tuesday last week has really made some impact in trying to, to spur your interest in participating in the platform. Mm -hmm. So we're just at 12. Again, uh, just in case you've lost the Mentimeter link, I doubt that you have, uh, but Siam can put it again so that we get everybody voting at this point. It's a yes, no, or maybe. I think what we have here is I don't know yet. So maybe it's convincing. We had 19 out of 63 now. Awesome. So if you have an I don't know yet and need anything clarified, again, I'll uh, make the invitation that Stefan keeps making. Just send us an email and indicate what uh, you'd need further clarification on or what still uh, causes your hesitation to be part of the platform. We are 24, so let's see how many more people can be able to indicate whether they would join the development process of the platform or not. Yeah. Uh, Jackie, sometimes the mechanics of getting to the Mentimeter and, and uh, so, yeah, I think. Yeah, um, see, I'm just put the Mentimeter <laughs> link again yeah. uh, on the chat so that we can get more people voting. Now this is critical and I think I didn't really stress that it is a co-design process. It's not prescriptive. We do not have the full uh, knowledge of either the situation analysis or the requirements uh, for the institutions or the individuals that would like to participate. And therefore your inclusion at the very beginning is critical. So we'd really want to know whether you'd be interested in being part and parcel of the process or not. Because if you are not, then it means we need to do a little more ground, groundwork. If you are, then it means we are good to go. 
in terms of uh, setting up the platform. Yes, I notice uh, Mohammed would have to leave. Uh, please leave once we have your vote, but thank you very much for participating. So only have 27 out of 60, come on guys. Mm -hmm. The Mentimeter link was reposted by CM. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Mohammed, for voting as well. And please remember to join us uh, next Tuesday for our Good Morning 3. Thank you for your time today. Perhaps for all here, uh, Mohammed is from SILS and uh, SILS is leading the writing of the general TCIP in the West Africa EU Alliance. Yeah. Okay, we are 27. At least we can get 50% voting then. Just three more. If you haven't voted, the link is on the chat. Now, I think for me, what's impressive, Irene, is nobody is saying no, <laughs> not even one person. Okay. And I think that is that, that's something. encouraging. That's something. Yeah. Something. <laughs> Yeah. So we'll start with little resistance, no resistance, I think I might say. And more explanation. More exactly. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I just need three more, then we move on to our next agenda. At least that uh, we'd have done um, exactly 50% of our audience this, this morning. Come on, I know you can vote. <laughs> It's easy, really. <laughs> yes, awesome. Two more. Two more people. Then we are sure we have a majority to proceed. We have your mandate to be able to start the process we've been talking about. Fifty-eight. Before we drop any further, may I have just two more votes? Thank you, Ismail. We notice you agreed to join. I hope you voted the same. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Sometimes they are right. They're not, not voting. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> we need to get at least 55, 50% uh, 50 of our quorum. Guys, just two more. Jackie, have you voted yourself? <laughs> Maybe I should vote. <laughs> I'm looking at everybody else except myself. Forget ourselves, okay, yeah. And okay. suddenly the blue pillar is going through the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stefan, have you voted? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very important democratic instrument, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. With my vote in, we are at 29. One more. We need our CM partners to vote as well. <laughs> oh, there we have it. So at least we have 50% hey. agreement <laughs> of let's proceed, Irene. So congratulations. Yes. Thanks for the session. Uh, I you. think at this point, I hand over back uh, the floor to Stefan. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much for this excellent session, uh, Irene and also Jackie. Uh, to the TM, CM team, please may I uh, share the screen so that we can come to our um, last session here. Um, once again, uh, this was a good morning. Uh, we can say again, uh, grab your last coffee and your last tea, please. And um, let's share some last spontaneous statements uh, from today's discussion. What are your takeaways uh, from this session here today? Unfortunately, I cannot see in this setting here who is raising her or his hands. So um, please, uh, Jackie, could you help me with that? Uh, please raise your hands and then uh, Jackie will give you the floor. What are your spontaneous takeaways from today's discussion? 
This could also be a critique, of course. Um, perhaps we missed something, um, but please summarize for us what is your takeaway from today's discussion? Anybody? Somebody? Use the raise your hand button and then we'll be able to give you the floor to speak. I don't see anybody. Oh yeah, I see one person. Henning, is that you? <laughs> Henning, is your hand up? Henning, good. <laughs> <laughs> Henning? We cannot hear you. We still cannot hear you, Henning. It doesn't work. Okay, Henning, jump in, Henning, when, uh, when you believe uh, it works and we will give you feedback. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, now it works. The headset is better. Yeah. Uh, one thing for me, which is not only important from this session, but from all of them, that we are really learning how to um, bring together such a high amount of people to mobilize them and allow them to participate. Because beforehand, we were in the modus to have workshops and we didn't have the funding means to involve all these actors. So I think we should do a lot of more work on this type of coming together and discussing. And uh, this will help us to, to fill these links we discussed uh, where we need uh, the dialogues actually for action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that feedback, Henning. How about uh, the other participants? Mm. Nobody's raised their hand yet. Do I have any hands? I, I did. You don't seem to see my hands. Dora and Stephen are lifting their hands. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Dora, please. And then Stephen. Thank you. Well, oh. I think the internet connection takes time to reach from one uh, continent to the other, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I would like to add as a comment to uh, both Dr. Irene and what Henning have just said is that uh, there are two, two points. One is that there is an obvious, obvious interest in uh, the different uh, entities talking to each other. The uh, impact of this concept of multi-stakeholder bicontinental approach on a range of uh, private sector entities and funders together with researchers is a clear proof of the interest and therefore we can assume of the um, interest and therefore willingness to participate and to make it happen. Uh, the, the other point is that in the same time that we do need to have indeed a platform to institutionalize those, this cooperation that uh, the challenge will be to design clusters because um, it will make it easier for the actors to participate to clusters and integrate to clusters. What I would like to say about the private sector cluster is that it obviously requires building up south-south uh, clustering as well as uh, south-north clustering on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. Uh, it's obvious that farmers organizations and private sector need to talk to each other almost independently from the researchers in order to structure their uh, participation to the platform. And they need help for that. While in the same time, uh, being integrated uh, in the platform. For me, that is going to be the uh, challenge in the designing the, uh, the platform structure and governance. 
Excellent. Thank you very much for your feedback, Dora. I see uh, now in a setting which I found here in Zoom, uh, the hands. So, Stephen Adegion, please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, from the interaction so far, my take home, number one, we've been able to establish the importance of stakeholder um, in carrying out our activities. And also, having in mind that the stakeholder process can be very complex, that we need to decentralize it and have it at different levels for effectiveness. That's one. Number two, we've also been able to see the importance of private sector when it comes to fund pooling or fund raising for the success of the platform. And um, lastly, um, okay, let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen, for your kind feedback. Much appreciated. Anybody else? Please, what is your spontaneous takeaway from today's discussion? We hope, by the way, very much that you made use also of the link that we shared in the chat uh, where you can express your interest uh, to join the platform. Uh, if you didn't do this so far, please do that. We collect your uh, addresses then for uh, the sake of keeping you informed in the future. Uh, so please make use of this link. I see that Gaetano posted this link in the chat again. Uh, that's excellent. Thanks a lot for this excellent work. Are there other comments, uh, some spontaneous takeaways to be shared here in the plenary from the participants? If yes, please raise your hand and activate your microphone and uh, share your thoughts, please. If this is not the case, I suggest um, that we move on and uh, come to an end of this meeting. Uh, colleagues, first, a big thanks uh, to all the speakers, uh, to the technical and logistics support, and to the organizers and the facilitators of this meeting today. Um, that was an excellent job. And also thanks a lot to all the participants who joined uh, the meeting today. This is uh, the right direction, I would say, uh, that we are taking here. We have to come together, we have to discuss, we have to contribute uh, so that we create the platform that we want. Uh, and in that sense, uh, please um, be in contact with us. Um, you have our email addresses, you have our website. Um, you know that uh, we are organizing three further good morning uh, sessions in the frame of the good morning stakeholder forum from model to practice. Today was the second good morning, the third good morning, the next one is on the 8th of February next week. There, uh, this good morning is uh, dedicated to the issue of linking research and practice at program level. So please uh, get registered, um, join uh, also this good morning session to be a part of the overall platform development process. Um, we thank you again very much. Uh, warm regards from uh, Leap for Evan SSA. We're wishing you uh, a lovely day. Um, and uh, I hand over to you, Jackie, for the last words of this second good morning from model to practice. Thank you very much. Uh, without repeating what you've said, I'm just going to ask Gaetano, would you like a family photo for the group today? <laughs> because if you do, I'm sure there's some participants that are not there in, on Tuesday. Awesome. So few few moments just to show your face so that we are able to remember today and your interactions, our discussions. This is how we create memories. And I like the fact that Gaetano calls it a family portrait. <laughs> so we should remember today. Let us know Gaetano when you're done. Otherwise we'll be holding plus. There are a lot of people with the, the camera switch off. So, okay.
here. Get some lighting so that we're able to see you in the photo. Ahmed, you don't have your camera on. Uh, Mary also. Moshen Ali also. They put me to the photo to the uh, camera. We should zoom or uh, letting know that we would love to have a, a setting where we can see all in one screen. <laughs> yeah. Mine <be> cool. <laughs> is on, but it's not showing. Oh. Gaetano, you have to let us know when to stop smiling. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank okay. you for uh, the active interaction with the, the meeting. Thank you very much. Please remember to register again. Uh, good morning. The third good morning uh, uh, stakeholder forum is also a different link on the 8th. So you have to register again and use a different link for that. Um, see you soon is what I would say. It is not goodbye. So we hope to have further interaction with you. Uh, I think I leave it at that, Stefan. I'll just say, have a good rest of your day, <laughs> morning, afternoon, or evening. But thank you so much for joining us. Bye bye. See you all on the 8th of February. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's the problem.